Holy schmoly's, man. Is it really Sunday night? How did the time go by so fast? I feel like I, I basically just ran card streams and slept. I hardly feel like I've done anything. I feel like the days are literally just melting into months. You know what I mean? Crazy. I need like a, it's weird. I went on vacation for Christmas, but it didn't feel like a vacation because I just stayed home. I need an actual vacation or something. Or I don't know. I need like some big change in life. I gotta have something, something new, something crazy going on. I'll go make a baby. How about that? That'll keep me busy. <laughs> What's up? Real kid economist. Put this over here. All right. He says, I did a pre-order. That's right. You did. Uh, you did, was it two boxes of cosmic? Let me go look it up again. I can't remember. 700 that's right so this is the tyranitar this is psa 10 uh this is from a japanese set it happens to be the neo destiny set so this is neo destiny tyranitar very cool set you guys know this set's famous for having shining charizard in it shining mewtwo and many other great cards and amongst those cards is this lovely tyranitar and he's been going up in price a lot of them actually i was going through some of my japanese cards they've all been going up in price dramatically and that doesn't surprise me. When I started getting into the Pokemon card collection, I was looking for cards that, um, you know, people weren't appreciating them enough. And uh, I ran into the Pokemon Japanese sets, the vintage sets, and I thought, oh my gosh, people really ought to learn a little more about how these are kind of flying under the radar. You know what I mean? Anyways, I don't think they're done going up either. I think those cards will keep going up in price until they're at least within a certain range of the English equivalent. Now... Let's jump over here. If we got a pre-order from Mr. CSman, I'm pretty sure it's a pretty large one. Alex says, sell, sell, sell. What's up, Johnny P? Are you in America? Because I'm in Australia. That's right. Mr. Give us face cam right now because CSman just spent so much. That doesn't make sense. You didn't spend it. CSman did. Gentu says, super weird. I got that card in a lot today, and I'd never seen it before until about an hour ago, and now you've got one. Weird. What? What's up, Sand Clan? Mark Asian Asia says, hello, I saw your stream yesterday. Sweet. Do a face reveal. Only Sisman got a picture. I'll send a picture to Sisman. Okay, so let's see. Sisman's pre-order was two boxes of Cosmic Eclipse, and he wants to keep the bulk. Let's do it. Two boxes. We'll start with box number one, and we're going to go nice and fast, just like we've been doing. And we're going to keep all your bulk. He says, I still can't believe I got that Lily last night. Woohoo! That's right, that was a great pull. We had a really crazy night yesterday. He says, bye, I need to go to school. Mister, when is the only fan going live? This is how you start a stream. Fresh Cosmic, yep. Cosmic Cosmic. What a great set. Alright, so here's the deal, guys. Tonight we will only be going live strictly for three hours. That's because by the end of yesterday's live stream, my back was hurting, just like it did in the past when I would also sit too much. I just think it's an unhealthy thing to do, and it wouldn't be that bad if it was like a once a week kind of thing, but this is more like a once a day kind of thing, even on weekends. So I can't have seven days a week where I sit down in a chair for a solid straight hours leaning forward. So it's gotta be a three hour live stream, so this stream will be a little shorter tonight. I like the five hour streams, they're more fun. It's three hours is going to have to be how it is. He says, oh, come on, mister. People sit for eight hours at work, lol. Yeah, but people who sit for eight hours at work, they can kind of like shift their weight around. You know what I mean? I can't do that. Do you see my hands? My hands are right here in front of the screen. What you don't understand is to host this kind of stream, you have to have your arms forward and you can't really move, you can't really shift too much. I can sit on my foot, that's about it. So I sit in the same position, and I can't do that for five hours for seven days a week. Because if you do that, you start to injure your back. You can actually get a back injury from sitting too long. I also don't take breaks, really. Think about that. So five hour stream, no break, okay? I'm not taking a lunch break, I'm not taking a 15 minute, I'm not stretching and walking around the office. So it's real unhealthy. So that's just gotta be the way it is. And I'm already working eight hours a day. I got a lot of shipping to catch up on. I got a lot of submissions to do. And uh, I also do a lot of other things in between that as well, including restocking the cards, doing card accounting, and just many other things. Eevee reverse hollow. So anyways, it's going to be three hours tonight. Mister, he says, you need a stand-up table. 
I tried that. I didn't like the stand-up table. I used the stand-up table for shipping. Uh, I don't like using the stand-up table for opening packs. All right, let's see what we got. Breviria. Ooh, Piplup trainer art. So with this box, hopefully you can pick up the Pikachu trainer art, right? Three hours is more than enough. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. All right, check it out. A hyper rare pops out. It's Sil Valley. So Sil Valley might be the the uh, hyper rare for this box. We've got Tropius. What's up, ID Chronicle? How's it going, Mister? We got Sil Valley. He says you missed a tag team card like pack two or three. Says my Matt Shaw. Well, I tell you what, CS Men will find it in there. Okay. Somebody else said that last time. It turned out I didn't miss anything. Mr. Go on vacation. Sweet. I'm on my way to vacation. We got Naganadel. Mr. Why is that Charizard so cheap? I know, right? Only $3,100. Gosh, he should be $5,000. We got Drampa. Oh, there you go. Sweet. Picking up the Reds Pikachu. What a great box. Already off to a good start. We got Erica and Nosepass. Sweet. Now... I don't think I have any empty ETBs lying around. Let me go get an empty ETB. You're back. Oh, I see. Your, your card's right here. So we got an empty ETB here. And I'm going to grab another ETB from over here. Because I'm probably going to need two. <clears throat> Oops. Oops. Just need my computer. We will have more Max Gold soon enough. Yeah, Red's Pikachu got really expensive. Do I have the Rainbow VMAX from uh, Vivid Voltage? No, I, I didn't bother with it because he's so overpriced. Okay. All right, we're all done with that. Let me put this box over here. Sweet. Now we're ready for the second half of the box. All right, here we go. Sleep. Mister, I have a Pikachu Rainbow Gmus. Gmus. Oh, my gosh. A Gmus. Sleep. Mister, you need to sell, sell, sell. We're in a bubble. <laughs> We're in a bubble. I've been buying, 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 actually. Mister, can you say Yugi's? I want to open some Yugi's. Mom, he said he ran out of Yugi's. I tried to buy some maximum gold and he was sold out of them. Mom, mom, go to Walmart. Get your credit card. Stop saying the Y word. <laughs> Let's see, we got Flareon. We have, ooh, another Blastoise Piplup. Sweet. Mom. Ralts. Florges. What else we got? We got Dartrix. We got Type Null. They scalped all the maximum gold. Mr. Someone told me, he says, thanks for the talk. Oh, no problem, CS men. We were talking a little bit about a little bit about US politics. Cottony. I was telling him how I live next to St. Louis, and St. Louis is a city with a lot of crime. Ooh, Weavile. We got Oddish. Ooh, Valplum. Love the late night streaks. Super educational. Super pokey educational. I want to get wiped. Sound tattoo. Mom! I want some Pokemon. I hate it. This is stupid. I want to die. Volcarona. Isn't that how kids are? <laughs> kids are so dramatic. We were all kids once, though, right? Oops. Beware. We were all kids one day, and now we're older, and we get to tease them a little bit. Some of you guys are new to the channel. And uh, you've missed out on some really funny moments in the past. 
where we would host fake giveaways and get everyone in the chat super hyped up just to tell them it was fake. <laughs> they get really upset. Uh, it's a little mean, isn't it? It's a little bit like bullying. It's harmless bullying, in my opinion, because it's just for free stuff, right? Everyone wants free stuff, but you're not going to die if you don't get free stuff. That's the truth. We call it teasing, right? That's why I would have called it if I was a kid still. I'd be like, Mom, I was just teasing him. <laughs> get the belt. <laughs> Mom, no, I don't want to get whipped. <laughs> Let's see. Me, 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 me. Yeah, we used to do that one. I think the funniest one is when you have a, somebody who's really active in the chat, like a, a really young kid. I mean, really young. And uh, they're begging for free stuff, and you give them something. You give them something for free. Mom, I want some free Pokemons. Hey, Mephto, you got some free ones? I want a Zared. I want my Zared. Mr. Set Charizard misgraded. Uh... That's a great question. Maybe what you're asking is, can you see it up closer? Which I'd be happy to show you if you want to see it. PSA has maybe a, not as strict of a, a 10 rubric or whatever you want to call it as other companies. They actually allow some off-centering in the front, but some people don't care. They say, well, PSA graded at 10, so it's a 10. Who? We should host a fake giveaway. Sleep. I just think it's cool to have a Charizard for sale like that. And if he ever sells, I'll just grab a different Charizard. I'm watching this instead. Alex! Oh my gosh, Alex said me, 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 me so many times that he's going to get the free Pokemons. My mom said it was a 10, so it's a 10. Yeah, exactly. Mom! Tell him to give me all the free Pokemons! He's not sharing! This is stupid! I hate him. All right, let's see what we got. Another Torkoal. Ooh. Torkoal and what do we got here? Fion. Me, 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 me. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing. I told people this. Oh, here we go. Guzma Hala Full Art, huh? Very interesting. Those aren't girls. We only like the girl Full Arts. Where's Rosa? We've got Oracorio. Oracorio is kind of a weak GX in this set. I don't think Oracorio was ever that popular. What else we have? Feel. We got Sand Slash. Why can't I order the card on the description? What? What are you talking about? Here's Wishy Washy. All right, Wishy Washy. Sweet. I'm going to sort through the cards after we're done, do a little box review. Mr. finally got CGC slabs. They look nice. You know what? I really didn't know enough about the CGC company. They've been grading stuff for a long time. So they're not they're not really new. They're new to trading cards, but they're not really new to grading stuff. And uh, they grade coins, I believe. They grade comic books. The slab is okay. I think the slab is fine. I originally was like, heck no, only PSA. But I think what really changed my mind is... PSA needs a, an 11th grade. They need, a, they need a perfect 10. They need a black label. We need to be able to know when a card is really deserving of a an even higher grade. And PSA doesn't offer that. I think that's a big mistake for them. That, and sometimes they're a little loose with their 10. Like, I think companies like CGC and BGS are more strict. In the past, you just looked at BGS as a strict grading company. Like, oh, that's their thing. They're strict. But with CGC coming out, doing exactly the same thing as BGS, you start to realize, oh, it's normal to grade strictly. What's not normal is to grade kind of loose. So people, well, they'll say stuff like, oh, PSA is the standard, PSA. And, you know, the standards are just kind of your perception, that's all. Just kind of look at it and you go, okay, that's correct. It's like, says who? You know? Well, they've been doing it a long time. That's true. Having a sip of my drink. There is no list on the description for cards and prices. Oh, try hitting the refresh button, mister. You might have joined too early. Reddit is controlled by Democrats. Uh-oh. I've been a Lego... I've been a Lego except, like, for three years. Now you're moving on to Yugi's? What? You single? Yes, sir. Hit me up. Here's my number. 
Mister, he's talking about your greatest slabs in the back. Oh, yeah, those aren't listed in the description. You just go off of the prices you see on the table. That's because they're constantly changing. What's up, Alex? Thanks for the tip, man. He says, remember, it's not asking for mom's credit card if you mow all the lawns and give money to her one year later while you sleep outside. Do it now. What? <laughs> Mom! Are Evo PSA cards a good investment? Yeah, I'd say so. I think the Evo cards are... Look... <laughs> investment. You got to be careful with Pokemon card investing. I heard about that Pikachu going for like $14,000 recently. What a terrible expenditure of your money. It's not, that's not an investment at all, in my opinion. There's so many vintage cards that go for that much, uh, you know, or, or less. Like I just picked up a Shining Mewtwo from, from Neo Destiny and it was cheaper than that. It was just, it's just some hollow Pikachu that they just printed and probably almost all of them are tens, if not at least half of them. Uh, so your question is, is Evolutions an investment? If you really like the Evolution set, I would tell you, buy it and display it and hold it in your hand and enjoy it. And if a lot of people also like Evolution, then yes, it's a good investment. If you're just looking for the number one investment, it, may, it might not be Evolutions. You won't know until time passes, by the way. But you can make your predictions about what you think the very best investment in the Pokemon cards are. All right, let's see what we got. Beware... Is a first edition Team Rocket pack a good investment? It's the best investment. All right, what do we got here? We got Trap Inch. What's my favorite Pokemon? Uh, Excadrill. Let's see, we got Pancham. Mister, can we say the Charizard up close, please? All right, we're going to show you the Charizard up close. Woo, 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 woo. Can I actually show him up close? Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> All right, let's do what's next. Pig Knight. Yeah, actually, my back's hurting right now. That's no good. It was hurting uh, earlier. It was hurting earlier. It's from sitting too much. So that's no good. It's funny because I'd already done this to myself. I already knew there was a problem with the sitting too much, and yet I did it anyways. I spent like the last week streaming like over three hours. Just silly of me. Armaldo. Whew, where's the hot cards, man? We need some hot cards. Here's Nagana del Guzzlord. So I'm going to say this, CS Min, the first box was good. The second box so far has not been so good. But we're almost done, but it's not over yet. We got Ducklet. Okay, we got a Full Art Solgaleo Lunala. That's okay. That's a decent card. Okay, what do we got here? Weavile. That's probably going to be the end of the box. Let's see. One one last pack. Yeah, that's the last pack. Cool. So the first box was good. The second box was definitely more of a cold box. I don't even think there was a hyper rare in the second box, was there? Okay, CS Man, I got all your bulk set up here. If you order any more card, I'll place it in there. Sweet. Let's do a review to see what he pulled. We're going to do a card review. Do I have it back? I don't know. Do you? Seems like something you would already know, wouldn't you? How would you not know if you had it back? Okay, we we'll set this vile plume down. We got Sil Valley. Okay, we're ready to go over your polls. Could you pre-grade the Red's Pikachu? Yeah, we'll take a look at him. So he got these full arts from the two boxes. Now, the second box gave you Goose Mahala and Solgaleo Lunala. The first box gave you Volcarona and Sil Valley. So I would say the first box is probably a little better in terms of full arts. And then the first box also gave you Red Red's Pikachu. The second box did not. So I think the first box had didn't it have both Piplup and Pikachu in it. So let's take a, a close look at the Pikachu in case he wants to grade it. So your Pikachu's looking like a 9. Would I grade it? Yeah, I'd probably grade it anyways, okay? So I would still consider grading him. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the GXs. The first box had Charizard Brexit in it. I think it also had Blastoise Piplup. The second box had like a lot of the unpopular cards like Oracorio, Nagonadel, Guzzlord, and Low and Persian. So it's weird. One box can be really hot and the next box not so much. Thank you very much, CS Men. Uh, CS Men, you're going to have multiple bags for me to ship. I'm creating another bag for you, CS Men. 
because you have so many carts over here. And we're going to have to do your, your shipping very carefully. Where's my markers? Here we are. C. S. Man. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Let's see who's next. We probably have quite a few orders now. I'm going to refresh my page now. Salesman, can I have it? Oh, my God. Mister, your cards are too expensive. I'm broke. I'm sorry, Andrew. Mister, I'm broke. I need some pokey Monopoly money. I wanted the red Pikachu. Ten. Man, why is it off-centered? Well, it just came out that way. Uh, oh, why is it off-centered? You're asking me. Okay, so specifically, if you look on the right side of the back of the card, it's thin. And then the left bottom corner has a white dot on it. So the odds of it pulling a 10 are pretty small. They're probably going to catch both the white dot and the off-centering, and it's going to come back a 9. Pretty close, though. You came pretty close to a 10. Pretty close. You, it could have had bad luck and not pull one at all, I guess. But let's see. Let's start opening some pokey cards. First up, we've got Gabriel Lujan. He says, two champions path, two vivid vapes. Now, please keep in mind, guys, a lot of the prices have changed. So be sure that your orders are up to date on the price change, okay? We actually change prices almost every night. So always look in the menu when you're making your order. All right, let's see what we got. Sneep. What's up, Simvicta? Sneep. So this, once again, this is for Gabriel Luhan. You ready, Gabriel? Let's see what we got. Oops. Set this over here. Three, four. We've got Trubbish and Snorlax. Oh my gosh, we got a Snorlax. Mister is related to Elon Musk. Did you know? That's right, I'm related to Elon Musk. He's my second cousin, twice removed. I don't even know what that means. All right, let's see what we got next. He says, that's me. Everyone knows it's Butters. That's me. What's up? Oh my gosh, it's Snorlax. We have Venusaur V. All right. One hollow Snorlax and one Venusaur V. Sweet. Let's go ahead and find your bag. So Gabriel's going to be in the G-Box. He shouldn't be hard to find at all. Unless this is his first purchase, but I don't think it is. I recognize his name. Gabriel, Gabriel, haunted. Here we are. Sweet. My brother is here. What? William Hernandez. He says three cosmic and one darkness ablaze. I have a bag and a bulk box. Sweet. Thank you for letting me know you have a bulk box. Remember, guys, you always got to let me know when you have a bulk box or else I'll accidentally forget to give you your bulk. All right, here we go. Sneep. Sneep. All right, there we go. Who's your biggest roller? Hmm, that's a good question. Well, recently, Bryant Lewis, he goes real deep. CS Men does too, actually. So Bryant Lewis and CS Men, they really like to open cards. Uh, it changes from month to month. Some months, you'll, you'll have somebody who's clearly the highest roller. Uh, in other months, uh, there might not be somebody who's going too deep. It just varies. How much does it cost to ship bulk? It's not too much, actually. So shipping bulk, if you want to buy a bulk box, uh, I just take 13, is it 13 or 14? I can't remember. It's like $14 for a bulk box. And shipping bulk costs me $13. So it, I'm basically just asking you to pay the cost of shipping. Do you believe in one-pack magic? I do. Do you believe in magic? We got light bar. What's this? Boop. That's an old song. Seville, Megalopunny. We got Megalopunny. Megalopunny so funny. Mister, 110 for 640 cards is a good deal. Um, sure. Bye, bye, bye. Woohoo! We got Groudon. I would know. I never buy codes. Never buy codes. So that was for Mr. William. And Mr. William, you even told me that you had a book box, and yet I still separated all the book. So let's go back and gather it all together. Okay, we're going to need these. 
There we go. All right, we got it back together. Let's go ahead and put this in its own baggie. Do you sell sealed booster boxes? I would rather buy from you than a random. Uh, I do. Yeah, if you would like to buy a sealed box, that's possible. William Hernandez. Sweet. And we put this over here on the book pile. And then we're going to find William Hernandez's bag. William. Hmm. Oh, here he is. Wow, he hasn't ordered in a little while. Look at that, Misty. What the heck? Let me make sure it's the same William. It probably is. We got a little number there. We got to confirm that. Yes, it is. Same William. Sweet. He says, what? Oh, you haven't seen Misty's flavor? That's Misty's flavor. Okay, let's see who's next. Culture Josh, what's up, man? He says he wants one shiny star. One shiny star. Where are my shiny stars? It looks like I need more. And grab one from back here. Giveaway tonight? Oh, baby, you know it. The biggest giveaway. What set is that Misty from? What set is that Misty from? Um, Pokemon, Sword, and Shield, BDSM. Misty's favorite, PSA 4, Surface Zero, Krusty, what? <laughs> so, Coulter Josh would like one shiny star. Oh, look at that. It's like all folded over. So weird. And then he would like some live shipping, and he confirms his address. Thank you very much. Let's see what you pull. Everyone liked the live. Oops. Hey, thanks for becoming a member, Cameron. And in this pack, you pulled just the Dragapult this time. Womp womp. Do you have the Band Sabrina skate case card? Yes, I do. Um, in fact, I think Bryant Lewis bought one of those from me recently. I have two more. So technically, I could sell one more of them and still have one left. So Culture Josh. Where am I going to find Culture Josh? Did we move you up here, you think? Let's see if we moved you up here. Craig. Andrew. Culture Josh. Man, I'm really having an issue at this point where I'm desperately running out of extra cards to give away during the uh, the custom custom booster packs. All right, let's see. So Coulter Josh, and we're going to go ahead and live ship. All right, let's see, let's see. Coulter Josh. Oops. We're going to get some cards on either side. I can sell you some V-cards, mister. I'll take 10000 for 500 Hmm. It's $2 each. No, you said 10000 Hello, people. I am now a member of the cult. Sweet. Thanks for joining, man. That Gyarados looks nice. Why only PSA 7? Mister, can I please use the Charizard up closer? Where do I buy packs from you? Uh, there's instructions in the description. All right, let's get this label printed. Printing a label. That Charizard is $31. That's right, $31 Charizard. Oh, my God. Somebody will believe that, too. That's a funny thing. Oops. Hold on. Let's get this email. Okay, we're gonna increase the weight. And let me just make sure your address matches. Yep, sweet. Oh, Martin Luther King Day. Guess they're not picking up today. Postman really said, see ya. I'm on break. That's cool, we all need a break sometimes. Federal holidays, those are a nice thing. I just want to know when we're going to have a federal holiday for me. I'm pretty cool, right? 
I have a Pokemon cards. That's like, that's deserving of a federal holiday in my opinion. I'll put that there. And let me take this up. My title should have been something like, I have a pokey dream, or something like that. That would have been funny. <laughs> I didn't think of that in time. Or Martin Luther King uses rest. <laughs> or sleep talk. How about that? <laughs> All right, let's see. We are done with Mr. Coulter, Josh. Now we have Philip. How's it going, Philip? He says, one pack of Sword and Shield Shiny Star. All right. Foot reveal. Why are you guys always after after feet pics, huh? Mom, the mailman didn't deliver my free Pokemon. Payment plan for the Zard. <laughs> hey, you know, if somebody's open to doing a trade for that Charizard, I'd be open to doing a trade. So you won't get that on eBay. Yeah, I'm open to doing trades. So if you got $3,100 worth of other stuff, we can haggle over it. It's totally doable. All right, that's ditto. I am very open-minded to trades. With anything, really. Not just him. But it's, it's easier to do a trade with him because he's so expensive. So if you're if you're trying to do a trade with, like, Shiny Gyarados, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to wait for Shiny Gyarados to sell. He's not that expensive. I know some people might have a collection worth $3,000 rather than money. And uh, the truth is, because I sell cards all, all day, it's acceptable to do a trade as long as it's uh, a reasonable trade. Okay, so Philip Trong, let's get this into your bag. Here you are. How much would you trade for a first edition fossil box? Oh, I think you're asking, wait, I'm confused. Am I giving you the fossil box or are you giving me the fossil box? Okay, and now we have Mr. Alejandro, two darkness ablaze, one shiny star V. All right, two darkness. Oh, okay. Well, if you're looking to cash out on the fossil box, I would even sell it for you. So that's a possibility. Keep that in mind. Uh, basically, you and I would have to haggle over the price that we're going to accept for it. And then you could basically just tell me what card you want from me. I mean, I'm, I'm down to trade some of my nice cards for a booster box. Uh, but to give you an impression, well, it's not easy to give you an impression. Yeah, I mean, we would we would basically, we would haggle over a price, and then I would have to make you an offer, and it could be a little tricky. Because you're talking about a box that might cost like 18000 right now. I don't know what fossil boxes go for right now. So I would have to give you a lot of cards to reach that amount. So two darkness ablaze, one shiny star V. But I'm open-minded to it, by the way. Ooh. Ooh. Do you have any first edition packs, mister? Uh, I have... Do I have any first edition? I do. I don't have any for sale. Senpai noticed. Okay, toss this over here. Good luck to Mr. Alejandro. You ready, Alejandro? Alejandro, you can't handle this. Man, I feel like having a donut right now. You guys ever just feel like having a donut? I feel like I need a donut or something. Ursaring. I had like... Uh, I had just some chicken soup tonight. And, yeah, I like potatoes and chicken in it. But I think it made me sleepy. It did not make me energetic. <laughs> like, I don't feel fast right now. I feel sleepy, dude. What do we got here? Ooh. You know what it was? I didn't get that much sleep. That's what it is. I got less sleep today than usual. Okay. We're going to go ahead and sleeve both of these up. You pull shiny Siliconda or something like that. I can't remember his name. Oh, he's a little snake. I could use a doni. A little doni and a sodi pop. I ate dirty Chinese food for the first time in a while tonight. It was amazing. Dude, I ordered some Chinese food with my wife. Maybe it was uh, about a, uh, was a week ago. And it was so bad. It was a restaurant we'd never tried. And it was just the grossest Chinese food we'd ever had. The quality was so bad. 
it's weird because you would think all Chinese food is basically very similar to each other. Maybe they have the same distributor. Or maybe they have the same recipes. I don't know what it is. But this was so bad tasting. And I ended up taking like two bites of my food and throwing it away. It was like a $40 meal. Just trashed it. All right. Alejandro. Mr. Alejandro Martinez. Let's find your bag. We were so disappointed. Hers was gross too. Feed it to Kitty. We like Chinese takeout. Really yummy, normally. But whoever cooked this Chinese takeout was shockingly gross. They need to, uh, they may, they need, they may need to make some tweaks to the recipe, you know what I'm saying? Is that saying all Chinese food is the same? It's like saying all pizza is the same. Well, yeah, it is. Pizza's all made out of dough. As almost all of it has red tomato sauce, and almost all of it has cheese on it and a few other ingredients. So Chinese food, Chinese takeout. We're talking about Chinese fast food, okay? Do you understand me? So Chinese takeout is kind of all the same. You got like your general so chicken, orange chicken, cashew chicken, right? You got like the noodles. So it's, it's quite similar to each other. I think it's because they get a distributor who sends them the food or maybe they all share the same recipe. I have no idea, but it, it does often taste similar. And sometimes you find Chinese takeout that is just a bit higher quality. I'm going to guess they've cooked longer or they've made adjustments to the the recipe and they're just better at what or maybe they're buying higher ing uh, quality ingredients i have no idea so i don't know i don't know how to run a chinese shop the the uh, fast food shop i don't know how it all works started from they were so gross we would never eat from them again anthony uh Vierstra? Vierstra? he says he wants three custom booster packs please give me the good stuff only three i have no bag yet all right you got it anthony here it goes he said only the good stuff we're getting started. We're starting out with the Charizard GX. All right, lovely. And moving on to Holographic Neo Ampharos. All right. And then on pack number three, we're taking a Fortress from Neo Destiny. That's Japanese Fortress. Okay, that's the first three packs. When will you introduce us to the missus? Oh, let's go right now. I break into the bedroom. You guys want to meet my wife? <laughs> Um, maybe I'll post a picture of her or something. Actually, there should be a video of her on my TikTok channel. You just have to scroll way down. She's like vaping or something. And I'm just recording her vaping. And she doesn't know that I'm about to upload it to TikTok. <laughs> it's wigged! Yeah, so you can actually see her. She's pretty cute. She was wearing a skirt for me today. That was really cute. She usually only wears like sweatpants, right? <laughs> Very comfortable. And uh, I was like, man, you gotta get a skirt. And uh, she did, actually, for Christmas, but then she never wear, wears it. And I'm like, man, you gotta wear that. <laughs> so today, she got she was all nice, and uh, it's so sad, though. We just stay at home. We don't go out. She got all nice and pretty, but we didn't go anywhere. And it's so cold outside. Neither of us want to go anywhere. There's nothing to do in Missouri. Did you know that? We were watching a video today, top 10 uh, places that have the most rednecks, and Missouri ranked number three. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm I'm just realizing, like, there's just nothing to do here, man. There's nothing to do in this state. So boring. Where I live, anyways. I don't know if I would go to St. Louis City, though, because the crime rate high is high over in St. Louis City, and I don't know what there is to do. I guess you got, like, the zoo. I'm not going to go to the zoo in the winter. And uh, the Muni doesn't open up until the summertime, so. Let's see. Coulter Josh is done. Phillip's done. We just finished Anthony. Now we have Andrew Edward. Andrew says, let's see if we snipe the wig packs. All right, Anthony, I'm sorry, Andrew Edward. Oops, I grabbed two of them. This one's gotta go back in. Oh, take a look at this. Celebi Venusaur and Evie Snorlax Full Art. So this is actually considered a hit. And uh, they're just two really cool cards. They came out of those tag team tins, okay? You could actually send those off to grade if you wanted just running out of things to put in here uh and andrew edward i believe you're over here somewhere oh hold on this shouldn't even be here this should be over here there we go cs man where did we last put you andrew oh i remember andrew i keep thinking you have like an overflow bag you don't you've got an actual bag craig here we are sweet Place those in there. Let's see what's next. Now we have Alex PSX. One darkness ablaze. All right. He says, do you believe in magic? 
One pack magic for Alex. Mister, do you live in the woods? No, I live in the suburbs. My wife and I, we describe where we live as like living in Walmart's backyard and or Walmart's parking lot. And it's just a, I don't know, just kills your soul or something to live here. There's no nature at all. I mean, there is, but it's like the most boring kind of nature. It's, it's almost, you look at it and it's just flat. There's no ocean. No, you got a river, I guess, but you can't go that close to it. And it is just gross out here. <laughs> you can hear that I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted of living where I live. I'm ready to move. Move to Texas. No way, man. I'm moving to, I'm moving to California way. So let's see. Alex PSX, I believe you have a bag right up here. Let's see. Cheese. Alex PSX. I'm moving to Texas before Texas secedes. I was reading an article that they want to put some, whatever, like some article, uh, what is it? Some, uh, I can't remember, man. <laughs> They're trying to pass a bill, I think, that has secession language in it, in the state of Texas. We're gonna succeed. All right, next up we have Adam Reiner. He says, wigged pack one, pre-grade on my best cards. I have a bag, thank you. All right, Adam Reiner, good luck. Move to the UK. All right, take a look at that. Holographic Jump Pluff. Sweet. That's from the Neo Genesis collection. Very old collection. And we also want to go through your bag. So let's go find your bag. I'm going California way. Going to strike gold. Adam Reiner. To be honest, I hate living in California. I love Texas. They just have to, they just, they just to have legal green. I think you mean you want uh, marijuana to be legalized. All right, we're taking a look at this jump off. It's got some scuffing on the hollow. You can tell it's thin on the left. And the back actually looks really good. Wow, take a look at that. So this card, maybe it could fetch about a uh, six or seven, I think. So the jump off, I would definitely grade. Piers. Here's is probably a nine. Here's your non-hollow Charizard. Your non-hollow Charizard might have a shot at the 10. You'll definitely grade that one. That's just an energy card. Pikachu. Here's Pikachu from Jungle. Wow, looking kind of similar to the Jump Pluff. Might be about a six or seven. Seven if you're lucky. Alone Executor. Might have a shot at a 10. Machop. All right, this looks played. So Machop's in pretty rough shape. He's, he's part of what you would call shadowless base set. So he's actually pretty rare because they didn't print a lot of this. Would I grade it? No. Would I hold on to it? Yes. Hold on to that card. One day it'll be, excuse me, one day it'll probably go up in price. But right now I don't think it's worth grading. Jengmo Ohalos, Gyarados Promo. He's not worth it. All right, and the Fire Energy. Cool. So you have some interesting cards here. Give me a second. Uh, in the nine pile, probably the best cards are the Pikachu and the Jump Pluff. If you grade those and get decent grades on them, even they will definitely be worth maybe within the hundred dollar range. And Piers is a nine. That makes me a little uncomfortable. I think people don't generally buy modern nines, so it might sit on the market for a long time. And then in the ten pile, you have this Charizard and Alone Executor, which you definitely want to take a look at. The Charizard, the Alone Executor, is no rush. The funny thing is that Red Cheeks Pikachu and the Neo Genesis card sell faster than the PSA 10 Executor, in my opinion. I always add that little <laughs> asterisk, in my opinion. Javier, what's up, Javier? He says, Mister, it's my birthday. I want one shiny star and one vivid. I have a bag. What's up, man? Happy birthday. PSA 10 Black Lotus going for a million on eBay. What? Buying cards in the million-dollar range, that sounds scary, man. Like, who are you going to sell to other than, like, a celebrity or something? <laughs> you're, you're definitely only selling to a high roller. You're probably going to fly out and meet them. And there's going to have to be, like, some legal stuff that happens, too. Like, probably some papers got to be signed. Who knows? That scares me. Q font. maybe I'm wrong, though. Maybe it's as simple as just doing another eBay transaction. You don't even got to talk to the guy. <laughs> Top three most boring states, Montana, Wyoming, Ohio. Mr. Open Vivid. 
Did I open Vivid? Yes. Is that what he asked for? Yeah, he said one shiny star, one Vivid. All right. Sweet. So one bid, 980,000. What can confirm Ohio kind of boring, but super comfy. Super comf. I want to be super comfy. Hey, we got Matang. No luck on the Vivid Voltage then. He says, yeah, you did for Alex PSX. I'm trading my Evo booster box for a house. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Depending on where you're moving to, you might be able to buy a house. I mean, somewhere somewhere in the world, they would trade that box for a property. They'd be like, this property is worthless. Go for it. Midwest comfy. I think you mean boring. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Javier. Didn't you have like a huge bag or something? Wait a second. Haha, -ha, you've got a bag right here. So we're going to put it in here. Mister, you opened Vivid for me. Oh, was I supposed to open something else? Let me know. Was I supposed to open Darkness? Darkness of Balls. Let's see who's next. Robin Panella. What's up, Robin? Can I get one shiny star and three champions packs? All right. I was supposed to open Darkness. Ah, oh, man, I got to stop making this mistake. It's costing me money. How many times have I done this? All right, so this is for Alex. Mister, I was supposed to get cold pulls. Just sent over for a custom. Ow, what did I do? Base set booster box. First edition will get you a nice box. What? Here we go. Lunatone and Agron. Ooh, sweet. Excellent title. <laughs> so here we go. I had s'mores outside tonight. Sneep. I could have gone with that title. I could. I should have gone with like a Martin Luther King quote, but converted to like Pokemon. That's what I should have done. Ooh. Ditto V Max. Ditto V. I mean, he says I was scared I wouldn't get cold pulls. Wasn't that Zard selling for three thousand five hundred before? Was he? No, that's the same price I've had on them. 3100 Set that over there. The title hit too close to home <laughs> from last night. All right, Robin. I think you ordered quite recently, Robin, so you should be in the front. Yep, Robin Pranella. I bought another box of Cosmic. Holy moly, man. Holy moly, man. Woo! Well, let me go ahead and refresh. We just finished Robin. Mister, I'm going to join your cult. Sweet! The Pokey Cult. Now, let's see. Yes, you did. Uh, let me do these other guys first, okay? Because it's not a very long wait, okay, CS Men? We have Aaron Fowler, who wants one wig pack. All right, Aaron Fowler. Aaron Fowler picking up the Gyarados. Sorry about that, mister. Adam Reiner. Where are we going to find Aaron Fowler? Alex, Alan, Caleb, Alexander, Anthony, Brayden, Annette. Okay, I don't think you're there. Isn't Cosmic getting a reprint? Hopefully. I don't see why they couldn't do a reprint on that set. I thought they did a reprint already. I thought they did a reprint on Cosmic and... The boxes I have right now are from that reprint. I thought that's what happened. Aaron Fowler, where did we put you? Where did we put your bag? I can't find Aaron Fowler's bag. He's hiding it. I want to trade. I want to grade my cards, but I'm not sure if I should. Says Broman. Aaron Fowler, did you hide your bag? All right. Next time we see Aaron Fowler, right? Okay, Anthony Vierstra, he says, three custom booster packs, I have a bag. All right, three packs. Texas is simping for Ram Ranch. Mister, have you shipped my Rainbow Charizard that I canceled grading on? Says Alexander Ross. Uh, no, so this is still sitting over here. Uh, if you want, you can send me a message and we can talk a little bit about that, okay? All right, and last but not least, what do we have here? Oh, look, five packs of Cosmic. Very nice. 
Haven't you think about doing an ASMR? All right, I'm doing an ASMR right now. Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon. All right, there you go. How was that ASMR? Are you asleep yet? Do ASMR pack opening. <laughs> what if for the next minute I didn't make any noise except for opening the packs? Would you guys like to try that? <laughs> How much did everyone pre-order for Shining Fates? I haven't pre-ordered any. Oops. Good thing my son likes McDonald's to get pro pro promo cards. Rub the cards together. I bet you couldn't. Question, I pulled it. Oh, yeah, I could. Sleep. Mr. Made Me Coon. Pokemon pack opening ASMR. All right, guys. Today we're opening up only Pokemon cards. Here it goes. Oh, Mega Low Pony Jigglypuff. Sweet. Pack number one. Robin says, I ordered three Champions Path with the Shining Star Pack. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Yes, you did. And we have the three of them right here. I'm a little distracted tonight, so I apologize for that. So there's your Champions Path. We'll get them in just a moment. We got Sand Slash. What's this? Will. Sil Valley GX. Do, 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 Tangela. Okay. Very good. Who was that for? That was for Mr. Anthony. And you just ordered recently. Here we are. All right. There you go, Anthony. Got your mega low punny jigglypuff, huh? Okay. Place this over here. Now, for Robin. Sorry about that, Robin. I'm going into McDonald's and just going to ask to buy cards. That's right. Sneep. Which is better? Long-term investment. Whoa. What was the Neogenesis Ampharos? What was the Neogenesis Ampharos? It was just a pretty-looking Ampharos. And Lycanroc. Oof. I'm so sorry, Robin. Those were cold packs this time. All right. Now we have Dave Jans. What's up? This is Snorlax V. He says, one pack shiny star for me. All right, one pack of shiny star. One pack of Darkness Ablaze gifted to Alex PSX. I'm in the overflow box. Sweet. So this is a gift to Alex PSX from Snorlax. You ready? And it's cold. <laughs> Woo. Is it just me or are gifts like 90% of the time they're cold? Luckily, I got a complete set of Vivid. Okay, sweet. What do we have here? Eevee. Ooh, look at that, Kyogre. Sweet. Amazing rare Kyogre. We're going to be ordering Happy Meals for Pokemon cards. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, man. Don't order like 20 of them. Okay. You know there's going to be like some race to get Pokemon cards out of those. <laughs> so you're in the overflow, huh? Which one is the question? Did I put you up top or did I put you to the side? Bryant Lewis. Bryant Lewis has got a lot. Oh, man. I need a much better system than this. Chris. We just have such limited room on the table. It's crazy. Drake Brown, Evan, Draven, Eric, Elliot. Okay, so you're definitely not here. So you have to be on the side. Here it is. Found it. Sweet. All right, we're done with that. Let's see who's next. CS Men, he ordered a whole box of Cosmic Eclipse. All right. I'm gonna throw away the Happy Meals just to make sure no one can eat them. <gasps> you wouldn't. You fiend. Good luck, Mr. CS Men. All right, CS Men's going very deep, man. Sneep. One, two. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Instant cherries are. Let's see what happens, CSman. Pack number one. We pick up Apom Gallade. Number two. Ooh, Arceus Dialga Palkia. That reminds me, there's an alternative art of these guys in this set, and that's a really expensive card, too. A lot of the cards in this set are really expensive now. So this was a popular set. So we got the trio there. We've got Vaplume GX. Set that there. I think that was both a collectible card and a playable card. And that was one of the reasons why it was doing so well. Fun fact, the Earth, Earth is flat. That's right. Don't let those... Don't let the Illuminati try and convince you otherwise, guys. They're drinking children's blood over there. Chin Chow. What do we got here? Excadrill. Sweet. How much is the whole box? Two dollars. Oh, we got another trainer art right away. Look at that back-to-back -back trainer arts. It's pretty interesting. Just shows you how a box can be distributed poorly like that. <laughs> Magnemite. Ooh, Flygon. Sweet. What booster box can we buy and at what price? Um, guess any booster box you want. To order 36 packs though, okay? We got Anorith. It's the Illuminati, they did it. McDonald's pick up PSA heart attack. That's right. <laughs> I got a PSA 10 hamburger and a PSA 10 heart attack. Okay, that's the first half of the box. Let me get these into a bulk box. I don't think we have enough room. So I'm gonna put these over on my desk, okay? Big orders tonight, huh, CS men? Set that there. Kitty, what do you think of that? Think it's pretty big orders? I think the orders are pretty big. Okay. How much is the whole Cosmic Eclipse booster box? $2. Man, do some math. He says, I was hot while you were gone. What? Now you're back and I'm cold. Snip. What's a good amount of money to waste on Pokemon? Um, two dollars. He says, why is this a cold one? Well, we haven't been through the other half of the box. Hold on. <laughs> it's not over yet. Sleep. Sleep. I rewatched and saw what you pulled. Sleep. All right, toss this over here. Oops. And we'll toss this over here. Here it goes. Roxy. We got Walreen. Gallade. The car said they can't be hot tonight after last night. Yeah, they can. You trying to twick me, mister? Little pup. Oops. We had a really good night yesterday, though, for sure. We've got Blacephalon. Wheezing. Oh, the babies. I know you were after this card. Don't lie to me, CS Men. He wanted the babies. Okay, Jolteon, Megalopunny, and Jigglypuff. Okay. Corbominable. Woobat. What do we got here? Uh, I'm feeling another trainer card coming up. What do we got? Guzma. Jangmo, oh. Rotom. Oh, man, where's that trainer card? There's Raichu. There's Oricorio GX. I have the babies, but the Japanese one. Sweet. Must have gotten it from Tag Team. A low and Vulpix. Well, there's only one more pack left. Woo! Steelix. All right, now you can feel a little annoyed. I think that this box was kind of cold. I'm sorry, mister. Cold box. I'm gonna put your bulk over here. 
little bit of a cold box. Let's review the pulls. So in this box, we end up with one, two, three, four. There were four trainer arts. So the four trainer arts were there. For the GXs, we did end up pulling five GXs. Now that can sometimes be a bad sign. The reason why that's sometimes a bad sign is because you're pulling too many GXs and not enough full arts. We got a single full art out of the box and it wasn't a hyper rare. Oof. I blame... I blame Pokey Jesus. What the heck? All right, there we go. Thank you so much, CS Men. That was very entertaining. Now we have Victor Londa. What's up, Victor? Victor Londa wants one Champion's Path, one Vivid Voltage. Going for that double Mega Rainbow Pikachu's art snipe. All right. Easy snipe mode. Whew. Pokey Jesus is hot. Any tag team boxes? Uh, not right now. Uh, they're supposed to be arriving, but they're taking forever. I might order them from... I might make another order, basically. All right, first pack is cold. Second pack is also cold. Oh, oof, mister. No double snipe. It is a double cold pack. All right, let me go ahead and refresh. Brian says, did my payment go through? Any vintage tonight? You hate Professor Card. What's up, Victor? All I get is cold packs. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Yeah, that happens. We have Ricardo Mendoli Mendiola. Mendiola. He wants a custom shiny star new buyer. I think he means he wants a shiny star and a custom pack. I think that's what he's saying. So we got one custom pack. And I'm sorry, we got one shiny star and one custom pack. Your custom pack is... Oh, you got a very interesting card here. So this is a Topps card from like 1999 or 2000. It's a very old card. And I have a few of these in a, in a box over here. So I'm handing a few of them out. And uh, I would probably grade this. Okay, I don't know if you'll grade a perfect 10 or anything. But actually, the corners don't look too bad on it. And this is neat arena for that, huh? So that's a Topps card. If you guys have never seen Topps cards, go look them up. They're, they're pretty hard to, in my opinion... In my opinion, these are undervalued right now. Let me say that. Okay, let's see what you get in this pack over here. What's up, Amber? How hot are the wig packs tonight? You want my honest opinion? Pretty hot. All right. And we'll toss this over here. Let's see. Anyone want some tops? I have 50. Mister, I'm curious. Have you ever been to a big Comic-Con before? No, I don't really go to those kind of things. Ooh. Coughing. I like to fart in Toby's face, and he likes it too. Oh, that's so nice. Mr. How come the title is, well, is? What? <laughs> oh, so for anyone who didn't understand the title, the title is a quote from a zombie movie. Okay, did everyone catch that? It's a quote from a zombie movie. I, I changed one part of the title from Winchester, I think it's Winchester, to uh, Canto. All right, so some of you guys might not have caught that. Okay, and that goes to Ricardo Mendiola. Shaun of the Dead, that's right. If you haven't seen it in a movie, it's a pretty fun movie. I don't, I don't watch zombie movies. Hello, everyone. Hey, mister, just got off work. What's up, Pokey K Nono? Been a long few weeks. Oh, man. You're telling me. Ricardo Mendiola. We're going to have a short stream tonight because I, I need a break. I got a lot of stuff I'd like to catch up on, too. I mean, honestly, ending the stream at the three-hour mark will give me back, like, maybe one hour to my day anyways. It's not that much. Maybe one hour, maybe two hours. It's not that much. Mr. Jonathan. What's up, Jonathan? Hey, Mr. Five Darkness Ablaze. All right, five darkness. And I have a bag. One, two, three, four, five. He says only good pulls. Oh, well, that's all you had to say. <laughs> Why didn't you say? Only good pulls for Mr. Jonathan Westfall. Is it Westfall? Yep. Jonathan Eastfall. Why do zombies go to sleep? A, when they are dead tired. What? <laughs> Man, when are they going to come out with the new season of The Walking Dead? I want to watch that. Maybe it's already out. I just haven't seen it. Mister, if you could have one Poke YouTuber as a guest on your stream, who would it be? Oh, uh, probably Russ, the best Poke YouTuber. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Heatran. Poke YouTuber. We got, ooh, Reverse Hollow Lugia. That is a good question. 
Ooh, Larvesta. <laughs> Russ, <laughs> I'm just being a, I'm being a goof. All right, we'll toss this up here. Probably someone small. I don't think I'd want to do a collab with the larger channel right now. What's the best card that you have ever pulled? The best card I've ever pulled, this Gyarados. It was quite amazing. So let's see, Jonathan. Jonathan. Oh, PSA finally responded to one of my emails. <laughs> they responded like almost a week and a half later. Let's see what they said. Wow. I basically asked them if I could get an order back sooner, and they basically just flat out say no. That's what the email says. <laughs> All right, well, that's helpful. Damn, dude. I'm just going to be using a lot more CGC. That's how it is. I mean, they're, they're flooded at PSA, and I think CGC grading is high quality. So we'll be doing a lot more CGC. Jonathan Westfall. We got to find his bag. He says, how do I buy? That's a good question. How do you buy? Jonathan Wood, Jay, Jesse, Jason, Joel, Jonathan Westfall. I mean, honestly, they probably get that question a hundred times a day at this point. If they're so backed up that we got cards with them from like eight months ago, if they're that backed up, they probably get they probably get emails about, hey, when are you going to be done? They probably get this email like 50 times a day or more a day. You know what I mean? Because like for me, I just have a couple thousand cards out with them. And I get a few messages a day of people like, did my submission come back? And I have to tell them, no, not yet. They probably get so many emails like that. <laughs> All right, let's see. The difference is when people ask me if the submission is back, I can't make it any faster. But they might be able to make it faster. They might be able to say something like, all right, let's get this guy done. But no, I don't think so. They're like, oh, no, we don't have it done. <laughs> we can't go faster. Tyler, what's up, Tyler? Another addicting wig pack, and if it's a pull, I'm going to get another lol, and I have a bag with one card. You got it, Tyler. You did it! You pulled the Gyarados! Woohoo! All right. Now you got a bag with two cards in it. Let's go find your bag, Tyler. Mr. Tyler. Sweet! Place this in here. He says, I'm going to cry. I'm sorry, Tyler. Now we have Mr. Zachary. Wiggity, wiggity pack, please, Zachary Cranston. So Zach is also picking up a pack. Zachary picking up the bell sprout. All right, we were just talking about that. That's a bell sprout tops. Very interesting. Zachary. Zachary, Zachary. And we'll grab this real fast. Do, 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 do. And now we have Alex PSX. He says, two wigged packs, trying to snipe, and I will probably not. Where's my waifu mom voice? I want to type kitty, kitty, kitty. Where's the kitty kid? Meow. All right, pack number one is Oracorio. And pack number two, oh, it's a pack of hollows. All right, not this time, Mr. Alex. If you look at the top of the cop tops card, the flag color is different for each printing. Blue is first edition. Oh, what? Wait, say that again. If you look at the back of the tops card, the flag color is different for each printing. Blue is first edition. I had no idea. Learning things. The flag, huh? I don't see a flag. I mean, you got me looking. I'm just not seeing a flag. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Is the card curved slightly? Would that affect grading? Uh, you know, they don't grade for warped cards. You, you know, when they show you the subgrades, they don't have like corners, edges, surface, uh, centering, and then warped, right? So it's not one of their criteria that they list. I suppose it's possible though. Did he just troll us? Maybe it was for a different set of tops, guys. There were a lot of tops. It's the Topps logo is black on that one. It says banana. Oh, very interesting. All right, Alex. So what you're telling me is that it is double first edition because black is better than blue. Okay, put that over there. 
double first edition. The top's logo is black, mister. Yeah, there's top black logo. Ah, I can't speak. Black logo and blue logo. Black is second print. What? Nuh-uh. Stop trying to twig me. Waskawee wabbits. Mister, do you have special delivery Pikachu? I do not. I can't believe the amount people are spending on the special delivery Pikachu. That was a topic I was talking to somebody else about. You guys, they must... So, yes, they're a, printed, a limited print run. All Pokemon cards are limited print run. If somebody's trying to get you to spend exorbitant amounts of money on a card because it's limited print run, every Pokemon card is part of a limited print run. This is a limited print run. This is a limited print run. This is a limited print run. Even this goofy promo card is part of a limited print run. Okay, so like you actually have to know the amount that was printed, right? People are buying the Pikachu card for ridiculously bad prices. Why would you, why would you spend five hundred dollars on a card that just came out like a month ago? It's gonna grade ten so many times. It's going to grade 10. Everyone's going to grade that Pikachu. You understand that? And it's going to grade so many times. And then in a year, no one's going to remember it. There's going to be another delivery Pikachu. We're going to we're all going to have collectively moved on to the next promo card. Right? Like there's a McDonald's promo card coming out. Is that what I understand? Is that what I heard you guys talking about? There's another promo card. And Nintendo can do this anytime they want. So I can understand the price of like let's say $700 on first edition Jungle Pikachu graded PSA 10. That costs $700, by the way, guys. I think it's $750 for a 10. And then you have first edition Shadowless Base Set Pikachu, right? Kind of the crown jewel in a way. Like, I get it. There's like the Illustrator Pikachu, but that's a trainer card. We're talking about first edition Shadowless Base Set Pikachu. And he costs... What does he cost? Isn't it like $7,000? I'm trying to remember. No, he was like $5,000. And there's people bidding up the delivery Pikachu to $14,000. If that's not fraudulent bidding, if it's not fake bidding, it's just bidding from people who don't know what they're doing with their money. That's, that's like the opposite of investment. That's where you take your money and you give it away to somebody else for nothing. It's like the opposite of investment. So it just makes zero sense to me. Like, if you want a good Pikachu, it's the same way, by the way, for Vivid Voltage. It makes no sense. Uh, you got people spending huge amounts of money on that Vivid Voltage Pikachu, the VMAX Hyper. Dude, you go buy, you know, PSA 7 of the Yellow Cheeks and Red Cheeks Pikachu. What are you doing? They're going to keep printing Vivid Voltage for a while. And it's modern, dude. It's, it's a modern card. The other thing is it's a VMAX card, right? Who cares about Mega Charizard now? Let me show you something. Here's Mega Charizard EX from XY Evolutions. Nobody uses Mega Pokemon anymore. See, yeah, he looks all goofy. He's got like the spike on his head. That was from several generations ago, two generations ago. It was the gimmick of that generation. Well, VMAX is this generation's gimmick. You're telling me you're going to spend all that money on the gimmick card of Pikachu? That's just goofy. You're not thinking, you're not thinking very carefully about how you spend your money, basically, when it comes to... You're tossing out $14,000 on this Pikachu. It just doesn't make any sense. Go get yourself a different, P an older Pikachu, you know what I mean? He says, blasphemy, I still want big rainbow Pikachu. Well, I get that. And uh, it's cool. He's got a uh, hyper version of himself. I get that. That's cool. Hey, mister, did you see that Logan Paul is opening another case? Really? I did not see that. I'm going to jump over to the news. Logan Paul... Let's take a look at the news. Let's see, Pokemon. Well, if he is, it's not listed on the interwebs, on the Googles yet. Maybe you can link me to that. If that's just a rumor, I don't want to spread the rumor, okay? He's not opening another case, says Alex. Thank you very much, Alex. Mister, I found a McDonald's promo. Mc How much for... Oh, man, you guys are talking quickly. Another case of what? His Twitter? His Twitter. He recently said he owns multiple cases on a podcast. Oh, okay, good. Just bought a PSA 9 Shining Lugia. He said it's one of his bot... 
he said it in one of his podcast episodes. Okay, well, I'll keep myself open-minded to that. You know, I don't like rumors, so I need to like some evidence of that before I can confirm that that's true. So I'll consider it a rumor for now, but I, I feel like I believe you because I don't see why he would stop stop opening them after the success of the first time he did it. Anyways... Let's get back to opening some cards. You guys heard my opinion on special delivery Pikachu. Outrageously overpriced. He's a modern card. Makes no sense to me. We got Tyler, Zach, Wiggy Wig, Alex PSX. We just opened for him. Adam Mundorf. He says, one champion's path, one custom. All right, you ready, Adam? We got your champion's path. Let's start here. If I take a pick of some cards, can you pre-grade them for me? Uh, Maybe. Machamp. All right, cold pack there. But how about the wicked pack? Ooh. Did I watch the new Resident Evil video? I have not. I've been far too busy. All right, put this in here. This goes to Adam Mundorf. What happened in the new Resident Evil video, huh? Here we are. How do I know if my PSA card is fake? How about that VMAX Charizard Rainbow? How much is UK Custom Studio on 20 boxes from Japan? Watch the trailer. It's Resident Evil 4 on steroids. Ooh. Next up, we have Alan Rivera Marin. He says, one wig pack. All right, one wig pack. All right, and you're picking up 18 packs of Darkness Ablaze. Congratulations on that, Alan. Let's get you your packs. It's been six months... Since I sent my cards to PSA, I'm starting to lose hope. <laughs> it's a long wait, huh? Toss this over here. How do I know if my PSA card is fake? Well, the PSA authenticates the card for you. If you get a PSA slab that doesn't really look right, though, you might want to try to compare it to some other pictures on the internet. Or, you know, post in a forum or something like that. Try to ask somebody for help. You can post a picture of it in our Discord. In the, uh... Gosh, I don't know where you'd, where you'd place it. Maybe in the show and tell. Yeah, show and tell would be a good place to take a picture like that. Be like, hey, is this real? Did you do my packs yet? Uh, maybe. I don't think I have. We're on Alan Rivera Marin. And next up, we have GMAC. Do you remember to fix the bulk pile after it almost fell? Well, it's always like the little top bit of the bulk pile falling over. All right. Mr. Alan, you ready? Alan Rivera. Mr., I sent a donation. Oh, snap. I'm sorry. Hold on. Mister, I don't think my Charizard isn't even graded yet, and I pulled that last year. Oh, my God. Thanks for the donation, man. I really appreciate that. Last year. Well, last year technically wasn't that long ago, but maybe what you mean to say is you pulled them a long time ago, and they're still not done. There's a guy selling first editions or a PSA 10 case that could be very bad and shouldn't be allowed. Okay, so what you're saying is a fake case or something like that? Fake PSA card? Mister, your stream's growing. Yeah, it's a little larger. Oh, what a win, dude. What a hot pull. There's the Charizard from Darkness Ablaze. This is the most expensive card from the set. Congratulations. Wow, dude, you got that on one custom booster pack. Crazy. We got Corviknight. All right, some good luck tonight, huh? Picking that card up for 20 bucks. You're going to get the rest of these pulls, too, whatever they are. Larvitar. He says, I love it. As soon as I turn in, you guys pull a Charizard. <laughs> Let's see what else. We got Blaziken. I was trying to get that Zard. That's why I keep buying DA packs. We got Stunfisk. What did I miss? We pulled the Cherry Zard from Darkness Ablaze. It's nice seeing them, actually. CGC is amazing. Granted, I submitted 15 Rainbow VMAXs. 8 came back 9.5. They, they grade faster, that's for sure. The prices are lower. They grade faster. Woohoo! You did it, Mister. Well, you know the prices aren't really that much lower. Actually, they're slightly more expensive if you do the subgrades. Now that I think about it, 
All right, what do we have here? Wishy-washy. We got Corvi Knight and... All right. Guys, I just want to point out, they came out of a fresh box. So I have multiple boxes open. You guys need to understand, I rarely pull out of a single box at a time. And we do that specifically to make it harder to snipe boxes, okay? Sometimes I'll pull from the left side of the box. Sometimes I'll pull from the right side of the box. I just grab rapidly. It's hard to snipe, is what I'm saying. All right, Alan. Mr. Allen. Oops. Kind of fell out, didn't it? Here we are. Let's get these back in here. <laughs> Sweet. And we'll put this here. Let's see what's next. GMAC. GMAC says, one wig pack and I would, one Shining Legends and one Hidden Fates. I have a weird request for these two packs. Can I keep the wrappers in my box? I'm using them to help sort my bulk. Okay, so it sounds like you're wanting to keep the wrappers. Sounds good. Wow, that's a big order. So one wig pack for GMAC. Let's see what happens. Oh, pulling the Wigglytuff and Metal Energy. Kind of cool. So those are those are played cards, and that's why they there were two of them in a single pack. Okay, so Wigglytuff Hollow and Metal Energy. You're also going to get one Shining Legend. So the Shining Legends became remarkably expensive. Shining Legends, they're probably not done rising in price. That's my perspective on them. Let's see what we got. For sh oh my god, really? You ready? Dude, pulling Hyper Rare Entei right away. Woo! That's nice. He's like, no way. So one pack Shining Legends. That was pretty lucky. And uh, Hidden Fates too, huh? Hidden Fates. And the Hidden Fates isn't quite as hot, but that's okay. After those other two packs, we're not we're not too upset. Because we're already doing pretty good. Do I have a GMAC thing I can just combine this with? I feel like I would. Oh, there's a GMAC. That one bag's already too full. How about over here? Here's one. All right. I'm watching So-and-So's Creek and Mr. at the same time. What? You can't watch me at the same time. How could you watch all these Pokemons? Oops. Oh, gosh. I can't get it in. I swear, this never happens. It's because the bags are, like, sticking to the side. There we go. Um, they're going to fold over a little bit. All right. This goes into your your bag. Let's go find your bag. Avonsky, what? ID Chronicle? Where's GMAC? Haunted. GMAC, did we put you up top? I think we put you up top. Gregory Morin, here we are. Sweet. All right. Next up, we have James Vogel. What's up, James? One custom rig pack. I have a bag labeled James Vogel. All right, James. Oops. Double. Woohoo! Man, we did it. Now, James Vogel. We're going to check check the old V-Box real fast. I don't recognize your name. Mr. Remember when I won the test tube a while back? Maybe it will have a big rise in price soon since everyone is crazy about Shining Love Legends. Maybe. Woo. Pricey card, huh? He says his name's James Vogel. He says he's already got a bag. This is my friend Justin. He's already taken, and he's cracked at Pokemon. Honestly, I don't remember the last time I pulled for someone with that name, so I'm worried you're going to be way in the back. Jaquez, Justin, Jeremy... And Joshua Kelly, the very, very back. Was he, like, new and I've already forgotten the name, maybe? No. So, let's check down here.
Here he is. Found you, mister. Sweet. You bought an expedition pack. Woohoo! Bought another box of Cosmic? Are you serious, mister? Oh my god. I'm about to be out of Cosmic in one day, guys. Next up, we have Alex Trailer. Two custom, two shiny star, two champions path. Okay, two shiny star. We got two shiny star. Two custom. Raichu and Pin Kirchen. Raichu Pin Kirchen. Places over here. Let's get these shiny packs open and then we'll get your champion's path okay. open, okay? Sneep. Toss it over there. Okay. Ooh. In Talion, we have Eternatus VMAX. He wants to pull the Reds Pikachu but in a PSA 10. Oh, hope you grab it. Okay, that's Sam Azenta. And... Oh my gosh, you did it! You pulled the Cramorant! Well, let's see what pulls you get out of the Champion's Path. Maybe something a little crazier. Here we go. We got two Champion's Path. Time to sneep. Why do you keep the empty packs? Sneep. What do you mean by keep the empty packs? How much longer are you streaming for? Oh, so... Oh, no way! There it is! Charizard VMAX was casually sitting in that box up there, guys. Charizard VMAX right there for Mr. Alex Trailer. Alex Trailer, you're not even... I don't think you've opened a lot of packs on this channel. Wow, that's how it goes, guys. It's all luck. Congratulations, mister. Just sitting on the shelf. <laughs> that's wild. So many people go so deep for that card. And you just casually pick it up out of two packs. Unbelievable. <laughs> Alex is having a nice... He's having a nice uh, Monday today. He'll wake up and be like, Mom, I did it! I pulled the Cherry Zard! All right, so let me mention grading real fast. If you would like for me to send this off to PSA, I can do that for 65. If you want it to be graded at PSA really fast, I can do that for um, 135. That's express. It's actually not that fast. It's like two months these days. And then there's also... CGC actually offers express if you're interested in that. But I haven't worked out a price. But the price might look something like 50 bucks. Okay, and their, their express, if I had to guess, is actually pretty fast. So that's something to think about as well. Okay. Alex Trailer. CGC has an express. It's wigged. Here we are. You did well last time. You picked up shiny double last time. Damn, dude. CS Min is mad. Well, CS Min wasn't opening Champion's Path. He's opening up uh, Cosmic. Okay, hold on. Let me pick one out of here. What is this? Adam Mundorf. Adam Mundorf, you're going up top. Okay, Adam Mundorf is up top, and this is going into that middle box now. Congratulations, Alex. Now, who was it that was saying that their packs never got opened? Wasn't there a guy saying, hey, did my order go through? I'm looking backwards to see if we missed any orders right now. Oh, hold on. PayPal's messing up. Let me refresh the PayPal right now. Yeah, it logged me out. Somebody was saying they wanted to know if the payment went through or something like that. Let me just go make sure. All right, we're going to go to all transactions. Ow. All right, where were we? We had just finished Alex, right? Yep, there's Alex. I'm just going backwards and making sure we didn't miss anyone. Was it a Brian Cranis? I think it might have been a Brian Cranis. Brian Cranis, are you still here? That looks like a name I don't recognize. Brian Cranis, I have your order. It's for one custom booster pack. However, you're going out of order because it appears I missed your order. So you have the option of opening the pack or having me refund it. You can do either or. So what would you prefer? 
I can open it right now or I can refund you and you can try it another time. He says you can open it up. All right, good luck, Brian. And this time it is Gyarados GX. For the stream! That's not a Charizard. I was promised a Charizard. All right, you have your first bag now. Good morning, Monsieur. Monsieur? Is it Monsieur? I don't know how to speak French. Brian. How the French doing? They had some they had some big drama not too long ago. Toss us over here. He says, I need that Red's Pikachu. Well, we're gonna get you that Red's Pikachu then, huh? Okay, now we're scrolling back up. Tammy Lowe is next. Tammy says, three wig packs, please and thank you. I have a bag. All right, Tammy, good luck. Oh, my gosh, the pack right afterwards says three ancient origins. We have a pack of vintage common uncommons. Oh, man. So I was doing a little calculation on these, and I was giving out way too many. So these packs are a little smaller now. And number three, holographic Nido King. Okay, sweet. Tammy Lowe. Three Ancient Origin. Good luck. Hopefully you pull a full up. Sniped again. Sleep. Tammy plays the... Uh, Tammy opens a lot of custom booster packs. So it's not too surprising. She gets so many hits. You will hope to get a lot of hits, right? <laughs> Let's see, pack number one is holo Reverse Hologumi. Pack number two, Special Energy. And pack number three, Rotom. Okay, unfortunately, those were cold. Just make sure there's, like, no full art kind of things. I think one time I saw full art in the bag. Huh, I guess not. Okay, unfortunately, this time, Tammy, no hits. Not as good as that Darkness of Blaze where we pulled out the Charizard, huh? Hey, mister, how you doing? What's up, Travis? Reggie Steele in every pack. Really? Tammy. Let's get that Nido King in the front. He's kind of cool. And we'll toss this up here. Let's see who's next. Johnny Tameo. Johnny says two wig packs. All right, Mr. Johnny. Sinistee, Celestila. Ooh. Okay, and we'll go ahead and pop this in here. He said two, so let's open the second one, shall we? Oh, what do we have here? Triple Charizards. That's three Charizards from Champion's Pack. That's a little bit better than a pack of hollows, huh? That's Nido King. You mean Nido King? Look, it's Nido King. Okay, John. Let's find your bag. Mr. Johnny. Johnny, Johnny. So, what would you guys like to talk about tonight? Anything fun? Toss this up here. I think one of the topics we just talked about was the price on that special delivery pikachu which i think is way way overhyped here we are it's way overhyped the 20th is going to be crazy i think what's happening on the 20th more pokemons what's your side hustle with pokemons i have no idea what you mean by side hustle all right zachary cranston is next he says let me get another wiggity you got it zachary cranston oops Put that back in. 20th is the, oh, the inauguration. Ooh. No craziness there, Mr. Zachary. Just a Gyarados. How I bought, how I bought five booster boxes of Cosmic and get off-center Charizard and Pikachu. Uh, <laughs> man, you don't get 10s from every pack. And that's the reason that PSA 10s go for for more money. That's the very reason that they sell for more money than the raw card, right? Why doesn't the raw card and the graded card cost the same amount? Because you don't always pull a 10. 
sometimes you pull a nine, right? Okay, give me a moment. Didn't it go for so high because of some swirls? Excuse me. I think it was fake. I don't I don't see why anyone would spend fourteen thousand dollars on that card. It's not even that impressive looking. Like at least the rainbow Pikachu from Vivid Voltage looks kind of impressive. And that card, I don't think that card broke ten thousand dollars the first time it sold. So I don't know why anyone would spend so much on it. I think it's fake. Nestor, I'm new, need a bag. One shiny star, one custom, one vivid. Alright. One shiny star. One vivid. This is for Nestor. Are you ready, Nestor? Ponita. All right. So your pull from the custom is Reverse Hollow Ponita. Hey, Mister, would you trade my bag for that Shining DOS? Shining DOS. You mean Shining Gyarados? The winner bidder. The winning bidder has zero feedback. There you go, guys. Did you hear that? The winning bidder has zero feedback. Literally, probably some troll. I've seen this before with Dark Blastoise, actually. One time, Dark Blastoise bid up to, like, it was it was just like this. It was, like, $13,000. But at the time, he was only selling for, like, 1500 So it just made no sense. And um, it's probably the exact same thing. Just somebody messing around. He says, been saying that all night. What do we got? He says, yes, but there were others bidding it on it too. Yeah, other fake accounts. You need two fake accounts or three fake accounts. It's not that hard. You should get a few fake accounts and keep it bidding up. One went for 7K. I want the 7K one. All right, let's see what we got. Pikachu V, Mr. Nestor. That's been happening with sneakers since forever, says G. What? G? I think his name is G. Seller buys it. Others have sold at a huge price as well. The price just doesn't make sense, guys. There's so many cards you can buy for $14,000 that are better than a simple hollow Pikachu, including the first edition base set Pikachu, which only goes for $5,000 as a 10. It doesn't add up. All right, let's place Nestor over here. James Whitlock is next. Don't worry, CS men, we're almost to you. So Whitlock says one custom wigged pack. All right, you get first edition Spiro. 300 raw is still a lot. Yeah, honestly, I find that overpriced as well. But everyone, you know, that Pikachu is in their conscious right now. And that's what causes people to buy stuff like that. They're just talking about it, thinking about it. I'm telling you guys, six months from now, one year from now, you won't even remember the card. That's the wild thing. It's not a memorable card. It really is not. In my opinion, it's not a memorable card. Memorable card. You got a bunch of investor types with money signs in their eyes going, oh man, this is the card I got to have. I don't want to miss out. There's a limited print run of them. I don't want to miss it. Every Pokemon card is part of a limited print run. Yeah, that is goofy, man. Let's see. James, let's find your bag. James, James not like a trophy card it's not like you it's not like you won a game and then you got rewarded with it it's just a card they were given out to people who ordered on their website there's a lot of cards like that throughout pokemon card history there's tons of obscure cards out there and honestly there's a lot of cooler ones okay let's see morgan john what's up morgan john two custom boosters i need a new bag you sure do we got Gyarados GX. We've had a lot of those, huh? It's because I'm running out of cards to put in the packs. Oh, two fast passes. That's kind of nice. So, Mr. Morgan John, we'll write that on your bag that you've got two fast passes. And fast pass allows you to skip the line, basically. The fast pass normally costs $50. Uh, the What you just opened is not considered a hit. That was a cold pack. A cold pack that gives you two fast passes. It does have a little bit of value. Like, if you suspect a box is hot, you can try to snipe it. You know what I mean? You can, Or if you're worried something's about to sell out. So there's a little bit of value to the fast pass. The other thing, you, the other reason you might get a fast pass is just um, so that you don't have to wait in line for so long. All right, so I wrote down that you have two of them on your bag. There you go. So if you ever just want to order cards and not have to wait, you can use one of those.
But sorry about your cold pulls from the custom wig packs. All right, so Mr. Siesman, who probably would enjoy having some fast passes himself, is opening another box of Cosmic Eclipse. Are you ready? So Siesman has basically gone through my <laughs> inventory of the Cosmics. USPS is taking forever, question mark, a.k.a. United <laughs> Postal. <laughs> Yeah, well, they're having a day off today, I guess. I don't know. They're very affordable, okay? So I don't I don't take that for granted. They're very affordable. And, you know, affordability comes at a cost. If you're going to have a really affordable service, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be slower. That's just how it is. You know what I mean? I always prefer cheaper and slower. All right, here we go. Can I get store credit for my fast pass? Uh, I can't do that, no. Those were cold packs that you pull the fast pass out, so it can't be store credit. What's the deal with the custom packs? Uh, the custom packs are my custom booster packs where you can open them in the middle of the live stream and you'll pull Pokemon cards out. Sometimes you get something cool like a PSA card, uh, like a really expensive P PSA card could come out. Sometimes a booster box or half a booster box can come out, just various things. So always Pokemon cards, and maybe one day I'll put uh, something funny in there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Time to pull you a PSA 9 Red Spikachu. I'm just teasing you. Start out with Volcarona. All right, he's okay. He looks really well-centered. I like the, the color red on that card. It looks really strong. I actually like Volcarona as a card. I think that Volcarona, or not a card, but a Pokemon. Volcarona is a cool-looking moth. He actually looks cooler than Venomoth in my book. I like that he's a fire type, too. Makes him seem more, like, dangerous or aggressive or something. We got Naganadel. He, he can use it. Oh, Lily's full force. This is a very good box now. This card goes for a whole bunch of money. Great pull. All right, so that basically pays for the box, especially if that grades 10. You need that to grade 10. We got Rowlet. Lily's full force. That card really just does not come out that often. You know what's weird? I feel like I've pulled more Charizards out of Cosmic than I have that Lily. Oh, thank you, uh, Debbie. What else we got? And I'm not talking about, like, just the full art Charizard or the Charizard GX. I mean, like, hyper rare Charizard. I'm pretty sure I've pulled him more often than Lily's full force. There's Red's Pikachu. What a hot box, mister. So you just, I think you're doing very well on this box, and it helps compensate for the previous ones. Now, you know what's crazy about this card? It looks great on the front. Let's check the back. Ah, oh, man. So, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to show you. So, you got this corner right here with the, what appears to be a little white. You got this one right here. You got this one right here. They all got white dots. The centering on this card definitely looks like it's within uh, the range of pulling a 10. And the reason I say that is because the front of the card just looks really well-centered. So I think without the white dots here and here, you probably would have pulled a 10. However, with it having three white dots, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a 9. So CS Man, you're so close. You're so close. It's still a great box. I mean, if that Pikachu comes back 9, you're going to make money on a 9 in my opinion. If, if the 10's like $600, you can sell the 9 probably for like $250. And, I mean, that's just really good. It helps you pay off the cost of the box, the cost of the grading. Uh, and you still got the Lilies, Full Force, and all the other cards that you get from the set, including, like, the Torkoal, the Coughing, Full Corona, and anything else you're about to pull. The crazy part with this box is you're not even done, dude. There's more cards to pull. We got Valplume GX. There's more cards for you to pull out of this box. All right, let me put this on my other desk again. See, yes, man, you have so much bulk. I'm a little concerned that we won't be able to ship it all because we'll go over the weight limit, but maybe we will. I'm not sure. There's also a limit to how big the box I'm allowed to ship to you is, so it has to be within a certain uh, shape as well. Let's see what happens. I'll get you as much of your bulk as possible. What? Plug in the toaster? What? Sorry, it wasn't much, but there you go. Oh, no problem, man very nice of you wow 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 we wow sneep 
Why does this happen to me? <laughs> you're very close to a 10. I think you're still doing good, man. Think about it. The earlier box you pulled had Charizard in it, Hyper Rare Charizard, and this box has a Lily in it. I think that the pulls from this Cosmic Eclipse set have been treating you fairly well. You're at least breaking even. You know, those other boxes weren't, like, super hot or anything, but if they if the cards you pulled grade well, you can still, like, make back some of the cost of the box. And then the ones that are doing well are doing real well. Check the back of the Lily. We'll do that in a minute. Let's keep going. You ready? Heard your... Oops. No way. Oh, I thought that was another Charizard. It looked kind of like the wing profile of the Charizard. So there's Blastoise Piplup. Man, this is the hottest box ever. You just pulled three full arts out of here, and they're all good ones. Well, the Volcarona is just okay. Yeah, you're doing great on this box. We got Wishy Washy. All right, now that the Wishy Washy has been pulled, you can only get bad, bad cards out of the rest of the box. We got a little one. Nine Tails. What's this? Oh, 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 a little too fast there. Blastoise Piplup. Mister, I hope you didn't put in a box of Cosmic as a wig pack prize. Bro, no way you're complaining now. Put this here. Mister, have I missed just started viewing? What have I missed? Just started viewing. Uh, you missed everything, mister. What's up, Jack? You missed all the Pokemons. We got Piplup. Can I trade you my two PSA energies for a Pokemon PSA card? Not a trainer. We got Flygon. Ooh. Place that there. Give it to me, CS Man, if it hits a nine. Uh, those those energy PSA cards, I didn't actually trade those to you. I still have them. I might use them to run some experiments on cracking cases. You know, I'm thinking about buying a little Dremel saw that I can use to crack open a case. I'm curious about kind of finding the safest method of cracking open a case where you don't risk hurting the card. Okay, you got one more trainer art and one last pack with just a gold duck. Okay, I'm putting this on the other desk. I'll be back. See, Esmond with all the pokey luck, huh? I see how it is. He just hogs all the pokey luck to himself, huh? So, let's do a quick review of the box. So this pokey box has been very hot. GXs. Lily's full force. Doot. Doot. Okay. Wow, that's really good. And the Lily might be a 10, maybe a little thinner on the top than the bottom, but PSA will be generous on that, I think. And this might be a 10 as well. So you should definitely grade these two. You can grade all of them, to be honest. Sorry about that, Pikachu, though. So close. Okay. I'll make you a trade, CS Min. You just trade me... I don't know what the trade would be. I got I got one of those Pikachus. You're looking for one of those Pikachus? I got one. Maybe you just buy it from me. I'll trade you this bag for one of the Pikachus. He says, that sucks. All right. Alex PSX says, one more wig pack for Mr. Alex. All right. All right, here goes. Oh, my God, Alex. What'd you get? PSA 8, number 61. That's cool. You're rich. He says, trade the pulls I just got for the PSA 10. Hmm, that is tempting. I'll have to think about it. I, hold on, don't pressure me. I'll think about it another time, okay? So we got Coughing is the card here. This is Coughing from Rocket Returns. Oh, this is a cool set. All right. Sweet. And that goes to Alex. Trade the poles. No, I, I'm not sure if I would like to do that, okay? So I, it was just an idea, but actually I also like having that Pikachu. I suspect that that Pikachu is a pretty good pull from that set, so I might hold on to it, right? So you'll have to give me time to uh, think about that. Let's go ahead and move on to the next person. We have Alan. 
Could you please send the Charizard VMAX to PSA instead of the shiny Ditto V I'm sending? Thank you. All right, sounds good. Let's find it. Here it is. Shiny Ditto. We're just swapping out two cards for him. Oh, he sent me a little dollar. That's nice, man. Thanks for the tip. All right. Congratulations on that. You must be very happy with your pulls. Okay, we'll put that back there. And we'll put Alan back in here. Very good. Upgrade. Okay, we'll put this back here. Cool. Gregory Morin. Gregory Morin says, two very hot custom wig packs. I have a bulk box. All right, good luck, Gregory. Pack number one is Gyarados. Pack number two is a round of vintage cards. Vintage common commons. Okay, put this over here. And we'll toss this over here. Sweet. Mr. Gregory, let's find your bag. I believe you're up top. F for Gregory. Poor Trump, he impeached. They put him in a peach. Mom! Oops, I was about to put you in the D box. There you go, G box. Mom, they put him in a peach. Mister, since I've been buying all the shiny star Vs, can I keep some of my books? Says Phil Nguyen. Uh, Mr. Phil, when you... I have to... I want to give you some of that bulk. I want to give you some of them. Um, try to remind me when it's time to ship, okay? So if you do live shipping, you can ask me for some extra shiny V bulk and I'll try to dig it out for you. You can see like it's really mixed in. So it's not that easy, okay? I have to go digging for it. Uh, but you can ask me and I'll try to find some for you. The other thing you can do is... So if you're really liking your bulk... Remember, when you order live shipping, you keep all the bulk from your pulls for this for the night, right? Like when you order it, uh, you can say like, here, give me live shipping and uh, don't do it till the end of the night. You can say that in the message, like hold my bag for today and do live shipping when the live stream's over. And then every time you order, you can add all your bulk up together in that one bag. Now, the, a much better way to capture all your bulk is to order that bulk box, right? So that's how we do it. That's because shipping bulk is really expensive and time consuming. How much does a booster box of Darkness and Blaze cost? Two dollars. All right. Let's see. We just finished opening up for Gregory Morton, and now we have Mr. Philip. He says payment for one shiny star. All right. Oh, looks like we need more shiny. Oops. Come on now. Yeah, I don't have any use for the bulk. Actually, um, I was going to announce... So, my wife, she will help me in the past by, like, sorting the bulk, but... She's been real busy lately, and she's doing her own thing these days. She's, like, making music on her free time. So I've been trying to think of a faster way to get rid of the bulk. And I think one of the new things I'm going to do is just stuff them into an ETB and sell the ETB off. And it'll be, like, unsorted random bulk. And I'll probably be putting those in the custom booster packs every now and then, but not really. It'll be, like, one pack is one ETB, that kind of situation. Probably one per box. And the other thing I'll probably do is list them available for sale. So that's, if you're wanting like a bunch of bulk for a reasonable price, I'm probably putting that together right now. Call them cold ETBs. You buy bulk. Will bulk include vintage bulk? No, that doesn't make any sense at all. Vintage bulk is actually expensive. Bulk with the sleeves and coins would be cool. Well, I've got a, like a whole box with like a bazillion coins in it. Ooh, we got Zamazenta. Dude, he says, looks like you do a fine job when you sort packs. Do I? I don't think I do that good of a job. I just kind of throw it around. What we've been doing lately is I haven't been sorting at all. I just kind of open the pack as fast as possible. Mister, are you letting your vintage Pokemons get the vaccine? <laughs> no, they'll be made artistic. I don't want my vintage Pokemon cards to be artistic. Now we have Valentin Salazar. What's up, Valentin Salazar? Two custom packs, need a bag. 
Bay has a small PP. Is it Bay? Here we go. Pack number one. Ooh, Jungle. Jungle Jigglypuff. Very nice, mister. Pack number two. Is Gyarados. That's right. I've been using up a lot of gears. Gyarados. Yeah, can't speak. Gyaradoses. I'm running out of cards, man. I have, like, these big boxes of cards, and that's why I've been stuffing these uh, custom booster packs with, but I'm kind of running low. Like, I'm not out yet, but I'm I'm just predicting that I will be out within a certain period of time. He said needs a new bag, huh? Can I trade my bag for a PSA card? Okay, I'm trading you your... your uh, what did he say? His bag? I'm trading your bag for my PSA 10 Charizard. Okay, here we go. Valentin... Tin? Salazar. There we go. Sweet. Raising canes. Don't make me hungry, mister. William Hernandez. He says, two darkness ablaze. All right, two darkness ablaze. I have a bag and a book box. And mister, please don't forget my book box. I won't. I won't forget, I promise. I pinky swear. Simon says, I have one. I have one 10 minute for me, the bread though. What? Happy Martin Luther King Day. How's it going, mister? Happy Martin Luther King Day. Grab these and toss it over here. I have a pokey dream that everyone should have a Charizard. Okay, what do we got here? Tyler. So Tyler's upset because you pulled a Gyarados promo out of the booster pack. But what Tyler doesn't understand, and that's okay, Tyler. We forgive you for not understanding. What Tyler doesn't understand is that one of these packs actually has some really expensive items in there. So just like a regular Pokemon booster pack, some packs are cold, some packs are hot. Very few packs are hot. There's a bunch of cold packs. And this is what affords the very hot packs. And uh, in this case, the Gyarados is a cold pull. Uh, just like you might pull a holographic or, a, you know, maybe even a non-hollow rare. Here's a non-hollow rare Vanillix. And it's worth like eight cents. And you pull this out of a booster pack from Nintendo. So it's the same concept. And, uh, you know, Tyler, if you don't like that, uh, that's fine. You don't have to buy one. All right. So let's see. This goes to William, right? Mr. William. I'll take your Gyarados. Mr. Mr. Where's that Gyarados? Here we go. William Hernandez. Oops. If you're not down with that, then we got two words for you. Pika Pika. <laughs> Mom! I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. Mr. Kanozone says four hibs and a wigged. I don't think we got four hibs up here, do we? We got three hibs. Oh, look at that. Four hibs up top. All right, good luck. You're getting the up top hibs. Let's see what we got with the up top hibs. <laughs> we just pulled a uh, VMAX Secret Rare Champions Path Charizard out of the uh, Champions Packs that were up there. Maybe these Hidden Fates will have the SV49 as well. All right, here we go. We got Misty Cerulean City Gym. We got Psyduck. Hmm. We got Vaporeon. Oh, no. I tell you what, man. I'll give you a bonus pack. <laughs> I knew it was a risk that that was going to happen. Let me try. I was hoping that they would just pay out. I knew there was a risk that... Yeah. He said four. Kano's on. Don't worry. We're going to treat you right, mister. All right. Tell you what. Let's do two more packs, Kano. Just because... Uh... I don't know. I had a feeling those could have been cold, but I wouldn't I wouldn't actually know until they're open. Bonus pack SV49. That's right. Let's see. Pack number one. Well, that's cold. How about pack number two? All right, mister. I'm just going to say those were bad luck packs at that point. You got a total of six packs, two bonus packs. Woo! He says, I bought what? I bought a $18 pre-grade. Pre-grade everything I have, not just one bag. Sounds good, Sisman. Now, you also need your wig pack. Let's see what happens. In your wig pack, you get a jungle executor. All right. Mr. K-No-No. Can you see if you got my payment? 
Whoa, man, you got a large bag. Put this in the front. Sweet. Whack, he didn't even show the whole pack to show if you had any shinies. Guys, should I send my Mewtwo to Becker CGC? Yeah, I did. So when I open the pack, I very quickly scroll to the reverse hollow slot. The shiny is always in the reverse hollow slot. And so if you had pulled a good card, it would show up there right away. So maybe you just don't understand the packs yourself. Okay, let's see, Ricardo, what's up, Ricardo? He says, two custom and a vivid voltage. You got it. We go very fast on this channel so that everyone can wait shorter periods of time for a turn to open cards. Pack number one is 18 Rebel Clash, and pack number two is Copper Raja, also from Rebel Clash. Doot. Doot. All right. Let's go get those Rebels. Mr. Is the Rainbow Charizard 3,100 pesos or 3,100? Definitely the, um, definitely they're rupees. 3,100 rupees, Mr. All right, here we go. Set that down there. Good luck on your pulls. He says, rupee is Indian. I know it's Indian. I want some rupees. How about shekels? All right, I'll take shekels. Sneep. Sneep. Do you think Vivid Voltage Rainbow Pikachu is overpriced? Uh, extremely overpriced. I would describe him as extremely overpriced. Yes. The answer is yes. What price would I buy that Pikachu at if you were selling it and I could choose the price? I will buy him for about $300 as a 10, already graded. PSA 10, already graded. I would buy him for about $300. All right, toss this over here. Very overpriced. All right, here we go. Oops. Are we in a bubble? <laughs> pack number one, pack number two. I don't actually consider the Pikachu from Vivid Voltage to be collectible, that's why. I told Brian to sell Pikachu for me 100. He doesn't listen. All cards are overpriced. There are just shiny cardboards. Now, I don't agree with that. I don't think all cards are overpriced. I think there's plenty of underpriced cards out there, but they have to actually be a collectible. And this is a concept that I think a lot of people don't understand right now. They don't understand the difference between uh, modern cards and collectibles. The Pikachu is not a collectible. He'll be a collectible one day, but there's no nostalgia for him right now. He just came out. He just came out. And really what's going on is you got a lot of people who are getting into the hobby, and this is what they're looking at because this is what's on the TV. It's on YouTube. And they're saying, that's the card I need. And they're passing up the opportunity to own a first edition base set Pikachu because they're blowing all their money on the Vivid Voltage Pikachu. It makes no sense to me. Flapple, oh man, what is this? Like a cold half of the box? Rillaboom, mister, what are your thoughts on Bigfoot? Uh, he's got lovely feet and should open up an OnlyFans. Tranquil, yeah, Tranquil. Oh, ow. Persian and... Oh, nice. Here we go. Double full art. Not bad, actually. You pull four V cards and a full art out of one half of the box. I didn't expect the double. Not bad. Double is not the strongest card, though, I guess. <laughs> He's okay. His name is Daryl. I knew it. Everyone needs a rainbow Pika, mister. Yeah, I probably will never own one. It's really just not a card I'm interested in. He looks kind of derpy, to tell you the truth. He looks like a blow-up doll. What do you... What do you... Is the most overvalued card? The most overvalued card, by far, without a doubt, is going to be all of the Shining Fates cards. People are going to spend exorbitant amounts of money uh, for cards that have no value. They, they just don't have value. I wouldn't touch them. So I won't be buying any of the Shining Fates for myself. I'll probably open them, and I'll do like, Oh, man, I can't believe I pulled this. Ooh, Wow. Uh, I'll probably do plenty of uh, reactions to them for Tiki Talk and all the other stuff, but 
to be honest with you, Shining Fates is going to be the most overpriced set. And I would probably consider opening Shining Fates more when it bottoms out in price. And then I would buy into uh, Burn uh, Shining Fates. So I'd be very careful with it. I would open it for fun, but I would understand it's not really an investment. It's just a luxury. It's just a luxury. If you enjoy it, there's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it's not an investment. A lot of people come here asking me, what's an investment? What's an investment? How should I spend hundreds and hundreds, thousands of dollars not on Shining Fates? You know, this is something I've learned over a long period of time because I've been doing this for so long. And I try to give you guys this kind of maybe like knowledge or experience. New sets come out. All these YouTubers like myself hype it, right? We're like free advertisement for the Pokemon card company. They must be loving it. Well, anyways, we hype these sets up. Leonhardt, he does his O-Face. Uh, there's the blurred Charizard thumbnail. We pulled another one, right, in the title. I can't believe it. And then everyone goes, oh, I got to buy that. It sells, out Wal it sells out at Walmart. You got scalpers everywhere. And the price just explodes on this set. Don't you guys get it? Nintendo's going to keep printing the set. There's no reason to pay the scalper price. They're just going to keep printing it. So... I don't, that's the thing that I'm struggling the most with right now. I see people opening cards that are really just overpriced because the demand is so high. What I don't understand is the demand. I don't understand that part of the equation. There are cards that are in demand from my point of view. Like there's cards I want. Uh, it's never the newly released set. It's the old stuff. The old stuff is out of print. The new stuff has been in print for a little while and it's going to be in print for years. It's going to be in print for like the next few years. You guys understand that? So the most overpriced card in the market will be any PSA 10 coming out of Shining Fates. I wouldn't touch any of the Shining Fates PSA 10s for like maybe a year and just see what happens. And uh, I don't really trust modern cards right now. People will say, are we in a bubble? I, I always find that question really stupid. But are the modern cards overpriced? The Shining Fates will be overpriced. Another set that's probably overpriced is Hidden Fates, but people just keep buying it. I don't understand. They like the way it looks, I suppose. It's overpriced. It's not even... In my mind, it's not even a question. It's definitely overpriced. Okay, we were open, opening for Mr. Ricardo. We got a... Oh, we did open his uh, Vivid Voltage. Let's get him put into a bag. And, oh, but what if I'm... You know, there's... I could probably talk about it all day long. It's actually the main thing that I do. You guys just don't know that. The main thing I do, see, I spend a few hours a day opening packs for you guys. The main thing I do is understand the price of everything. That's the main part of my job is to understand the price of everything in context with each other. And it just shocks me sometimes how much people will spend to open a modern pack. It just shocks me. Like I see it and I go, I can't believe this. So, that's where I'm at. Um, I like the vintage stuff a lot. It's just really expensive. And when it comes to when it comes to modern packs, they're still fun. So I will occasionally open them too, but they're just for fun. They're not an investment. It's the equivalent of ordering a pizza. You're ordering a pizza when you buy modern. It wasn't always like that. Wait a second. What am I doing? I just opened for Ricardo. Wait, what happened here? Oh, 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 I just opened for him and he already had a bag. That's what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, Ricardo. I'm a little distracted. There we go. He already has a bag. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been studying the prices of all the cards. And there's a lot. There's a few things I understand really well. Rarity. Uh, the rate at which a card grades 10. The amount a card has been printed. Change in price over time. Uh, and there's kind of an X factor. There's a hype factor. Hype contributes to the value of a card. I would be very careful with that one because anyone could hype a card if they felt like it at any time, and if you buy into hype, you're probably overpaying for something already. The trick is to own it before it's been hyped, so that's something for you guys to try and think about a little bit. Maybe you'll appreciate me talking about it. Next up, we have Roberto. Roberto. He says, large custom pack. Two for 20. High risk booster pack. All right. You got it, Roberto. Pack number one is the Gyarados. And pack number two is one Shining Legends. All right. Shining Legends. Oops. Toss this over here. You ready? One pack of Shining Legends. Let's see if you get lucky. 
Anything modern will become vintage one day. That's true. Uh, that's, a, that's something that is very interesting, interesting to talk about. Look, I'm not going to give you a... <laughs> Here's the reality. Here's the reality. I've done a lot of math on this, and I've been doing this for two years. And what I just said recently, like two minutes ago, uh, that's me revealing all the information I, I came to realize. And so you don't have to agree with me. You can invest all you want in modern. I've been doing this a long time, and the very last set I would invest in is Shining Fates. That is the worst set right now to invest in. Shining Fates and anything that was just printed. Oh, my freaking God, dude. Look at that. The centering is immaculate. This guy just made like $1,000 on this, I swear to God. The centering's immaculate. Look at that. Easy 10. Let's check the back. Oh, my Lord. Now, I'm going to say it's a little thinner in this corner than this corner. Now, here's my perspective on that then. You'll want to grade this with PSA, not CGC, because CGC will turn this into either pristine 10 or 9.5. PSA would just call this a 10, okay? So that's what you want to do with this Mewtwo. I can grade them for you for $65. That was for Mr. Roberto. Is that your first time ordering, Roberto? I think that's his first time ordering, guys. Holy... Mr. Roberto, Roberto, see, I'd be opening up Shining Legends before I open up Shining Fates. Does it just doesn't make sense to me. Shining Fates is going to get printed into the ground just like Hidden Fates was, right? Hidden Fates was printed into the ground because of the unusual demand. And people who are really trying to make sort of like an investment choice around a card kind of have to understand those concepts if the hype is too large. It's not you who will make money. It is the Pokemon card company that will make money. And and, and uh, people who are into collecting collectibles don't understand that yet because they're still new at the hobby. But I'm, I'm giving it to you. I'm telling you. I'm explaining it to you right now. Giving you the information right now. You're new to the hobby and you don't understand when the hype is high on something too high on a modern set. It's not you that's going to make money. It's Nintendo that's going to make money. And you're going to find out that your card was printed a bazillion times. So rarity is part of the equation. Nostalgia is part of the equation. Desirability is part of the equation. They all play a role. And that hype and the inability for a company to print enough of a set right as it releases, those are all part of the equation. All right. Let's see. Mr. Juan Reyes, he says, is it Reyes or Reyes? I'd like one bulk box and one vivid voltage pack. I have a bag. All right. I knew something was up when she said, use the back door. I'm on my period. <laughs> what? You can lead a Ponita to water, but you can't make him drink. I agree vintage is a king apart from the last print run of evolution that made a lot of people rich. Well, you don't understand. Evolution is basically vintage now. So people actually scoffed at me when I listed XY as vintage. If it's out of print, it's vintage now. That's my point of view. And okay, I get it. That's kind of playing around with the meaning of the word. Maybe you think the word vintage means it's 20 years old. For me, uh, vintage and out of print are very similar to each other. Uh, we can say that XY era is almost five years old. You know what I mean? Actually, it depends on what set you're talking about. So yeah, basically five years old. And five, maybe six years. LGC is selling Evolutions for $500. And you know what? There's people out there, they're running out there pre-ordering Shining Fates for, for ridiculous prices because that's where all the hype is. They could have just bought themselves one box of Evolutions and been in a better position. You would have just immediately been in a better position. But there's people bragging about the number of ETBs of Shining Fates they're grabbing. I'm looking at them going, what are you doing? You're crazy. Nintendo's not done printing those. <laughs> they're not collectible. You're not buying a collectible. You're buying something that's in print. Meaning Nintendo will just print as many of those as they see fit. And when you pre-order a ton of them, Nintendo says, okay, print more. <laughs> that's what happened with Hidden Fates. I See, and, and I, not everyone's been paying attention to that, but I've been paying actually almost daily attention, but at least monthly attention. Let me show you guys something. So PSA Pop Record, uh, let me get the, um, I'll get you that book box, mister, but let me do this first. You guys got to be paying attention to this or else you're just not going to understand what you're buying. So people are throwing tons of money into Hidden Fates. Let's see. 
I've been telling people Burning Shadows is the better Charizard. Because he's hard to pull. But for the Hidden Fates Charizard, SV49, Full Art Charizard, there's now 2,000 of them and 969. So you have to count both of these. Because when people can't count when people can't afford the 10, they buy the nines. So there's almost 3,000 graded. And that's within like the first whatever it's been, like one year or something like that since he launched. How many of these Charizards are yet to be pulled? Because they're still printing Hidden Fates. How many are yet to be pulled? How many are sitting in folders ungraded? How many are still on their way back from PSA? How many BGS uh, Charizards are there out there? How many CGC Shining Fates Charizards? I'm sure there's some. Not Shining Fates, shiny, uh, Hidden Fates. So there's a shocking number of them, and people are going to figure that out eventually. They're going to go, oh, this card isn't actually rare. It's not rare. And this is what happens when the hype is very high for a card and everyone is out there buying as much of it as they can. Nintendo just turns on the card printer. They're just printing themselves money, basically. So this is a problem that I've warned people about over and over again. I said, the, the problem is two investors buying the same card and the price keeps going up each time and they think that they're doing something and they're not. It's just two investors with dollar signs in their eyes going, oh, I'm going to speculate on this and make tons of money because I'm so clever. You're not really that clever. You're not really that clever. You're just selling it to another guy who thinks he's going to make money on it. And the real value of Pokemon cards does not come from two investors handing a card back and forth. It comes from the guy who wants to buy the card and actually keep the card. Now I'm going to show you the latest price on the Charizard. This Charizard still doing all right at 1300 I think that's a testament to like, it's a testament to how much people really like this card. It's a beautiful card. It's hard to pull. $1,300. But here's the scary problem with that number. So the Charizard's no longer going up in price, and he's actually fallen in price quite a bit. He's fallen in price by about $200. He used to go for $1,500 not too long ago. So here's a card actually receding in price, but nobody's really talking about it that much. I'm telling you, if all the YouTubers started talking about how that card is receding in price, that card would then recede in price even faster because everyone would kind of go, aha, I better dump my Charizard before he loses too much value because he's been overprinted. Why was he overprinted? Because people just won't stop opening Hidden Fates and Nintendo's still printing Hidden Fates. Do you guys get it yet? Do, do you understand it? They're still printing it. So the most overpriced thing on the market will be Shining Fates. There'll be all the hype. Oh my gosh, I did it. I pulled Shining VMAX Charizard, right? VMAX will be gone in the next generation. They won't, they'll have some other new gimmick. And they'll print 3,000 of those Charizards will be tens in no time. You know, it's the same idea. He says, is it okay to buy Shining at retail price? Oh, actually, yes. If you can get Shining Fates at the retail price, I would do that all day. But people have figured that out already. And, and so they buy it all out and then they sell it on eBay to somebody like me. So... You know, it's just, it's, it's really difficult. You're, if you can find it retail, enjoy yourself. <laughs> this is why I like your stream. You learn so much. I know a lot about receding. Whoops, there goes my hairline. <laughs> it happens to everyone. But yeah, so uh, the reason I like this Charizard better, and I've called this the best Charizard in the Sun and Moon uh, era, is because there was a problem similar to XY Evolution's Charizard where on the second print run and, and uh, subsequent print runs for the Burning Shadows set, there was a problem where they didn't cut the cards right, and so you didn't get any more tens of them. So there's a limited number of these tens, and if you go look it up, there's like 700 tens, which is still a lot in my book. There's that, 700 is a big number, but it's not even close to the huge bloated number of Hidden Fates, where it's like already at 2,000. You know what I mean? So there's like 700 of these out there, and... The nice thing is they're not really printing a lot more Burning Shadows. And even the Burning Shadows that already exists out there, sealed product, when you open it up, a lot of the times it's going to be second print run and it's not going to give you a 10 on that Charizard. You're going to get an 8 or a 9, but not a 10. So that's why, you know, I actually have multiples of these Charizards. I have, I have uh, two of them. I used to have three of them, but I have two of them still. I'm going down to one because I realized I only need one to look at. And that's sort of the kind of realizations I've made as a collector. Collect a card that you actually want to look at. No, you don't need two of them. Uh, and 
just enjoy the hobby and don't don't try to be an investor. If you want to invest, go buy. You, you can try to do investment if you want. There's probably a, a pretty cold calculation you can do where you buy only one type of product is the best performing product. You wouldn't touch any other product. At that point, why would I not just be, you know, dealing with the stock market and putting my money into the stock market? The fun of Pokemon cards is you get to look at different cards as you go. So, you know, what I'll probably do with this Charizard is if he sells or when he sells, I'll probably just go buy some other card for like $3,000 and that's probably what I'll do. So that's it. You know what I mean? But, but how would I rank this as an investment? High quality. High quality. Uh, maybe secretly high quality. These are really rare. Rocket return cards. Rocket return cards are scary rare. My opinion on this card, really high, Shining Gyarados from the popular Neo Re Revolution set. Giovanni's Persian 10 from Gem 2. All these are high quality. Here's Breakpoint. This is probably underpriced, the Espeon. Actually, I should go back and see if it went up in price. Uh, Tyranitar, I was surprised the only one on the market was 700, but then I realized it was part of the Neo 4 set, and yeah, it's those are really expensive packs now. Have you seen how much a pack of Neo 4 goes for? It's like 500. So you would have to pull one of these and have it not grade a 9. If it grades a 9, you're screwed. You did, you're not going, you know, you're going to actually have to buy another pack, hope to pull them again, and get the 10. That's where this price comes from. And then uh, Eevee Snorlax is really nice as well. Team Up just keeps going up in price. So Team Up is, a, interestingly, it's a Sun and Moon set. And there wasn't as much hype back then when Team Up actually came out. The hobby was smaller. Logan Paul hadn't done his thing. People weren't trying to get pokey rich. And so they printed a certain amount of Team Up. And now the hobby's exploded. And I don't think they're printing much more Team Up. I haven't heard about Team Up reprints. I haven't seen the price fall. So the price of 460 on this Eevee Snorlax, two of the most popular Pokemon in the hobby, uh, is pretty decent, actually. But hold on. Don't run out and buy them yet. The question you need to ask yourself is, will they reprint Team Up? And will they reprint a lot of it? If they don't, he is very likely underpriced right now. If they do... Uh, then he might be overpriced. You might be able to just buy a box for yourself and hopefully pull him in grade a nine or grade a 10. That's a lot of talking. That's a lot of talking and not a lot of card opening. Let's jump back to opening cards because that's what, there's people waiting for their cards to get pulled. Mr. Jack Gray. Hello, Jack. He says two Rebel Clash, two Darkness. Two Darkness, two Rebels. Is Rebel Clash still in print? All the Sword and Shield is still in print. It's baby stuff. All the Sword and Shield stuff just came out. It will be in print for maybe three or four years, guys. Do you understand this now? So Sword and Shield is the newest set. Sun and Moon is the previous set. Sun and Moon is still in print. Okay, so that was the previous generation, and it's still in print, guys. Which means when the next game comes out, you know, the game after Sword and Shield, when that comes out, Sword and Shield, all those sets are still in print. Do you understand how how young they are? They're very young sets. And if you gobble up all the packs off the market, Nintendo's going to go cha-ching, and they're going to print as much as they want because the demand is there. So you guys have to really think about that when you're, when you're investing, okay? I hate that term when it comes to hobbies. You collect in a hobby. You don't invest in a hobby. You invest in the stock market. You invest in the stock market. But with the hobby, you collect. But I get it. I get the I get the idea of investing. I myself have cards that have gone up in price uh, considerably, uh, and so I totally get that concept. It's just that I, I I I probably I want you guys to be careful with the idea. That's all. Wow! Look at that. The Rebel Clash Galarian Berserker just popped out. Beautiful. Only buy vintage for five years, so they don't print more modern. Well, and that's not the solution either. That's not the solution either, because. There will be a point where vintage stuff is overpriced because everyone stopped buying modern. Do you see? So everything's in relationship to itself. And you need to be asking yourself, is this particular item overpriced right now? And you have to understand why something might be overpriced. It might be overpriced because some YouTuber hyped it up and now everyone wants it because it's like an advertisement for that product. Do you see? When a YouTuber makes a video about a particular product, it's an ad. And everyone just watched the ad. And so everyone goes out and buys that product. So 
So you have to be able to think about that kind of stuff. The other thing I would say, so in defense of modern cards, in defense of modern cards, uh, in order to pull this Galarian Berserker, even if you were buying it off the shelves at Walmart, you would have to pay a certain amount of money to pull this Galarian Berserker because you're going to have to open up packs, right? And then he only grades 10 at a certain rate. So the real value of the Galarian Berserker might be about $200. That's the same for the Pikachu that I was just talking about. Pikachu VMAX, I'd probably pay about $300 for a PSA 10 Pikachu VMAX secret. And I would pay about maybe $100 to $200 for this Berserker. Because it would you would have to spend money to open the modern packs to pull them. But people who are spending $1,500 on that Pikachu, they just don't understand that in six, six months, seven months, eight months, maybe longer... All those Pikachu VMAXs are going to be returning from PSA. They don't understand that they're paying for the express grading. The guy who sends the Pikachu off to, to grade, he's paying for express grading and it's expensive. And you're paying for that. So as soon as the other Pikachus return, the price is going to fall. It just doesn't make sense to pay for it now. Anyways, this was for Jack Gray. I think you already have a bag. It doesn't make sense to pay for it now. Unless you're rich. He's pokey rich, mom. Mom. If you got the money and you don't care, then actually that's kind of reflective of the actual market. So if you've got a lot of money and you can afford the card and you want to spend the money, maybe that is the market, right? Tricky questions. Tricky, tricky ways to think about it. You know, the guys out there flipping those cards for profit, good on them. I hope they keep doing it. But I'm, I'm teaching you guys, my audience, how to think kind of maybe more rationally about how these cards are graded and everything. And, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a competition necessarily. You should have fun. If it's fun for you to have the Pikachu earlier, how is that any different than paying for a vacation or paying for the movies or a timeout? You know, so it's not all about frugality. Sometimes it's just about fun. That's something I understand really well too. You know what I mean? It's just the people who are like, what do I invest in? That's really who I'm talking to when I say all this stuff. What do I invest in? Definitely not Shining Fates. There's a lot of people who I think aspire to be like Pokemon card investors. I'm going to be a Pokemon card investor, man. You really should. It'd be cool. I got into the hobby because I saw the potential to start a YouTube channel and have it be my hobby channel. That's how I got back in. I was a huge fan of Pokemon card as a kid. I had quite a lot of cards. I had a folder that today probably could be worth like a hundred thousand. <laughs> I had basically all the cards except for like the, the latest Neo cards. I had a complete collection. You know, I was one of those kids who had all the Pokemon cards and I had it in my folder and I stared at them all day. And then I ran away from home when I was like 17 years old and I didn't take my Pokemon cards with me. Oops. Okay, we finished Jack. Let's see. Now we have Mr. CS Man. He wants a pre-grade. Let's do it, CS Man. All right, you ready? So we got your bag right here. Let me just make sure we don't have another bag for you back here. CS Man, I could have sworn you might have had two bags. Back to business. Hmm. All right, we'll start going through these. Let's start here. Okay, Blastoise Piplup, huh? Slightly off center, but I think he might pull a 10 at PSA. Lily's full force. Same deal, slightly off center, but has a chance at PSA for a 10. Modern's not the worst thing there is, and one day modern will be vintage. But people who are, like, loading up on, like, Hidden Fates right now, they just don't understand... How collectability works. All right, so that's not a 10. Flygon. I think that amongst the the modern sets, I think that Cosmics is actually a really good one. This is off-center, and it's a Flygon. Cosmic is a real good one. I wouldn't say Hidden Fates is a good one anymore. There's just too much of it. Hidden Fates was overprinted, and that's what Nintendo's supposed to do. And that was something I understood back then when the demand for Hidden Fates was unbelievable. And even back then, I was thinking about this very issue. And in my mind, I was predicting that 
they would overprint it, and that's precisely what they've done. And now you have 2,000 SV49 Charizards and a falling price. And the price is falling, and people don't even fully understand that he's not the rare card he used to be. People don't fully grasp that yet. Ooh, coughing. Wow, coughing's looking like a 10, I'd say. Weavile. Weavile has a chance for the 10, too, I think. Man, you got some of these cards look like 10s. Not all of them, though. All right, so this one's off center. The question is, will they still grade at 10? I would give this a shot at the 10 at PSA. Volcarona, again, two Volcaronas, huh? And they both look really good. Yeah, I like modern cards as well. I got a collection of modern cards that I'm saving. I can show them off to you if, if you want. I can show you my modern cards that I think will go up in price over time by a lot. I can show that off. Guzmahala. All right. He's looking real good. You got a lot of 10s out of here, CS Min. So this is this is going pretty good for you so far. So both the Pikachus are 9s, though, in my opinion. You can grade them anyways and see if maybe you get lucky. Pipple up. Wait, 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 wait. I meant to put them in the other pile. Sorry about that. What are about what about lame Digimon? Yeah, I'd say he's got a shot. Wishy-washy. Okay, that's a nine. Torkoal, that's a nine. Wishy-washy. Uh, it's got a little bit of a white dot up there. Weavile. It's a white dot. A lot of these have white dots. Oh, man, it's, got, it's just got a little white dot right there, and I feel like, I feel like they will reject it because of that. Slightly off center in this bottom corner. You might still have a chance with this Charizard. I don't know. Let me look at him again. God, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to put him in the nine pile. Where where are you reading our comments? You should show us. Uh, right on my phone. And the comment only stares, stays there for like five seconds, maybe three seconds. All right, that's probably going to be a 10. Then on the bottom here, <laughs> Vile Plume. What do you guys think of all that stuff to think about? We're going to put Vile Plume down here. I wouldn't bother grading the Vile Plume. What are your thoughts on Modern, everyone? I'm curious. Anyone here think that Modern, uh, maybe you feel very differently. Maybe you feel that Modern is a very strong uh, investment right now. Ooh. A low in Persian. Oh, looking like a 10. Actually. So there's like something going on up here. Do you see that? Yeah, I would I would probably leave that. In the, I'm not going to grade that, actually. I wouldn't grade that. I think it's the new gambling addiction. There is definitely an element of gambling to Pokemon cards. For example, you can open up cards and pull a Charizard VMAX out of one pack of Champion's Path, and if you grade that, it's actually worth a lot of money. So that's it. That's definitely an interesting thought. It's been around for a long time. It's not like card collecting's new. They've had card collecting since baseball cards, right? So the government hasn't done anything about it, and presumably never will. Presumably never will. If you don't care about the price, Modern looks better, to be honest. Well, I don't even agree with that. I think Modern's really ugly. The Modern cards are all, like, 3D prints. Like, look at this. This definitely looks like it was made on a computer. Uh, whereas the Vintage looks like it was hand-drawn. Which is immediately better. Va Plume. We got Coughing. That's thin on one side. Excadrill. Thin on one side. Gallade. Oops. Here, let me put these in the nines. I don't think modern will ever be as successful as vintage. There's going to be more supply than demand. Well, the modern sets that are in print... Oh, look at this card. Definitely some kind of error there. Holy. I wouldn't I wouldn't grade that one. Okay, so CS Men, for all those Cosmic Eclipse cards, you got a lot of nines here. And maybe some of these nines will actually be nice to you and grade a ten. So you never know. And I would definitely send in your Pikachus and your full art here.
these two Pikachus and the full art are money makers. Even S9s, they'll probably make you some money. Okay, so definitely send these three in. And probably the Charizard Brexton as well. So these four are still pretty strong, even as nines. So grade those. And then this is the tens pile. Hopefully they're all coming back ten. Uh, pretty much everything in here you could grade. Like this entire pile could be graded. Lily's Full Force, definitely grade that, along with the Blastoise Piplug. For a few of the cards, I had to kind of give them a little leeway. I had to be like, nah, they're slightly off center, but probably PSA would grade them 10. You know what I mean? Because PSA lets a little off center and get by. I, you know, technically CGC does too, but they call it a pristine 10. And a perfect 10 is when there's zero off centering. I have a Rainbow Charizard. Who should I grade with? Uh, it's just up to you. Ricardo. Yeah, it's up to you, mister. Can I trade my bag for a wig pack? Please, thanks, man. Can I trade my bag for a wig pack? Um, hmm. Gary says, did you hear the news, mister? They had to recall over 700,000 pounds of pepperoni, hot pockets, glass, and plastic contamination. Oh, gross, dude. I'm glad I don't eat those. Mr. James is next. Live shipping and one sword and shield. PayPal address is the correct one. All right. Let's get you one sword and shield. This is for Mr. James. I love glass in my food. Oh, my God. And you're pulling... It's a cold pack. Oops. And James, let's find your bag. Is that a yes, mister? Uh, no, it's not a yes. It's not a yes. It sounds like you really badly want to trade your stuff, but I don't actually want to do any trading right now. I just want to keep opening packs for people. James, maybe you can get someone else to do a trade with you. Jay, Jesse, Jason, Joel. He says, I'll trade you. <laughs> no! James, 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 James. Here's James. Nope, that's not the right James. Jesse, John. Oh, James. How far are we? No more orders, guys. We're at 160 minutes, which means we're approaching... We're approaching three hours. We're going to be wrapping up at the three-hour mark. Everyone is bullying me. Mom! Don't let them bully you. I have an Evolution Hollow's Art. Should I grade BGS or PSA 9? Um, well, you're kind of assuming that you're going to get 9.5 at BGS. If you think you're going to get 9 at PSA, you might be getting 9 at BGS as well. So that's the first thing I'd have to say. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're absolutely certain that it will grade a 9 at PSA then you could try for the BGS 9.5 if you wanted. I treat, here's the deal, I treat BGS 9.5s like PSA 9s. So if you tried to sell me the, the 9.5 for more than a PSA 9, I would just reject it. I'd be like, no, you got to sell for the same as a PSA 9. I mean, maybe if it was like slightly, 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 slightly off-centered, no white dots, perfect surface, and it graded 9.5 somehow, but I actually have owned a BGS 9.5, and they they give it the 9.5 for a reason. There's usually some significant flaw in the card that stopped it, blocked it from being a 10. And one one trick, one really annoying trick some sellers try to push on you is BGS 9.5, PSA 10, regrade, 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 possible 10, regrade, invest. That's what they say, and it's it's just a seller's trick, isn't it? If it would really grade a 10, if it would really grade a 10, ask the seller to, to regrade it. Don't have them make you do it. All right, let's get this shipped. But the person who is selling the card, they're holding it in their hand and looking at it and going, this isn't going to get a 10. So they instead try to pass it off onto somebody else. They go, I'll just get somebody else to buy this as if it was a 10. I'll try to get somebody to buy this. I'll try to get somebody to buy this for more than a 9. You should never pay more than a 9 for a 9.5. Makes no sense. All right. So I take a very um, I take a very nitpicky approach to that kind of stuff. People saying you could just regrade it. Like, yeah, sure you could. 
You're just a, a kind soul who wants me to be the one who has it regraded to 10. <laughs> so that's never it. It's always somebody that got dollar bills in their eyes. I bet you I could sell this for more than a nine. It's a 9.5, which basically means it's a 10. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, let's see. You are shipped, Mr. James. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. I'm going to get all of these orders out, uh, but I'm going to see who the last person to order was. It was Mr. M Business. So any order after M Business is not going to get processed tonight, okay? No more orders, guys. Now let's jump back down here. Where were we? Yeah, we're going to have a three-hour rule tonight. I'm going to try to stick with that. Oh, I can't find the previous order. Where was it? Oh, wow. I must have scrolled really far down. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Oops. All right. So this order is from Mr. Spine and Proof. Spine and Proof says large custom booster. You got it. Spine and Proof. His name is actually Spine and Proof. And it's kind of ironic because I need some spinal improvement myself. Okay. Spine improve. You got a bag on the table now. Can you show the modern collection, mister? I want to see the goodies. Yes. I think I should do that. I'm going to show you guys that I also invest in, invest in uh, modern cards, just like some of you. So it's not that I hate modern, it's just that I have a very clear picture of what it is. Let me go grab, let me go grab a box. So really all cards are, all cards have been moving up in price. The thing is, some cards move up faster than others. And I have a box of PSA cards here, and let's see what they are. Pikachu's Ekrom from Team Up. Mimikyu from Lost Thunder. There's that Eevee Snorlax. I got one on the table for you guys right now. I got two of them. Mewtwo Mew from Unified Minds. Shuckle. Uh, Shuckle's just a card I like. Gyarados. Lugia from Lost Thunder. Leafeon. The Eevee Lucians, right? Ambions. Mewtwo from Shining Legends. Oh, that's a big one. We just pulled one of those tonight. Shining Mew. Shining Lugia. Be careful. Those are real expensive now. Shining Ho. Shining Rayquaza. Charmander from Hidden Fates. These Rayquazas, which are not currently being reprinted. Blastoise Piplup. This is Burning Shadows GX Charizard. Some of you guys probably haven't thought of that. Burning Shadows Darkness Energy. Burning Shadows Fire Energy, Burning Shadows Fairy Energy, Necrozma from Burning Shadows, Gardevoir Burning Shadows, Darkrai Burning Shadows, Thickwick. Mmm, we really like Thickwick's personality. Put this here. She's got a great personality. Darkrai and oh, also Burning Shadows Muck. So why is Burning Shadows in there? Burning Shadows is in there because with Burning Shadows, they have a problem grading 10 and this naturally protects them from reprints okay so those are some of my modern cards not all of them i've got more and so it's not like i don't also hold on to cards but i do put some thought into the ones that i'm actually picking up the truth is i don't want shining fates is mostly going to be reprinted like crazy like hidden face was one thing you'll notice missing from that box hidden fates like what i had a charmander and a few rayquazas and that's because Hidden Fates peaked a while ago, and Hidden Fates is on the decline with the release of many new modern sets. And you guys have to consider, modern set after modern set after modern set is going to continue to be released for all time. So there's going to be constant pokey inflation. This is a complicated idea that some people don't really take a minute to think about. It's not that Pokemon can't re... They can reprint the old vintage if they wanted to, right? Uh, but what they will do is they'll keep printing new modern cards. And so similar to the dollar bill, Pokemon cards will suffer inflation. 
over time, there will be more and more Pokemon cards, and it will cost more and more money to own all completed sets. So Pokemon can print as much money Pokemon cards as they want. What's complicated here is kind of understanding how some items are rare and some items are not rare. And trying to figure that out is the hardest part. And, um, you know, that's probably as much as I'll say for now. Let me go put this away. All right. Speaking of which, you know, if I actually showed you how much those cards all went up in price over time, they all, like, tripled. They did pretty good. So, Spine Improved, we're done with that. Mr. Emiliano, what's up, man? He wants one Vivid, one Darkness. One Sword and Shield. One Sun and Moon? I think he wants a Sun and Moon. One Sun and Moon. One Unified. All right, let me get that Unified. Someone open World of Warcraft cards. All right, I know what must be done now. We got Unified Minds. One Lost Thunder. Lost Thunder. Here we are. One Cosmic. Okay, one Cosmic. My fear with Shining Legends is that they reprint that, but I don't think they will. One Unbroken. All right, one Unbroken. Should I buy a Mewtwo GX Secret Rare for 90? Mewtwo GX Secret Rare. Mister, I think your stream would really benefit off Club... That's right, we need Club Penguin. One Champion's Path. All right, Champion's Path. Do we have any more up here? Oh, my Lord. I got to go get an ETB of Champion's Path. I'll be right back. Champion's Path. The set that's not hot until it is. I hate Champion's Path. Not, you don't say that when you pull the cherries art. Then you go, I love Champion's Path. <laughs> yeah, Cha Champion's Path is also one of those sets that's maybe being printed a little too much. There's too many people with dollar signs in their eyes going, I'm going to get rich off of Champion's Path. And remember, when it comes to modern sets, one person gets rich before anyone else, and that's Nintendo. So you just got to be thinking about it. Throw this in here. I tried to find the clip on my cards, but I cannot find it. So I can see what is in my bag, please. Please, mister. Well, hold on. We're opening some packs for somebody. Okay, we'll put that over there. One break point. Heck yeah. So for those of you who are not following me on TikTok, I'm going to be opening up a whole booster box of break point over there. It's already been opened. I've already pulled the cards out. And it'll be released as a uh, multi-part series very soon. In the pre-grade, where was the Rainbow Charger at Brexton? Yeah, where was he? Wait. Did you already ask me to send it off? Is that why? Give me a second. Huh. C. Esman. You must have a second bag that I didn't grab. That's got to be it. Hold on, let me go looking. You're correct. So that bag we were going through must have been from today. That was this bag right here. And, oh, I'm so sorry, mister. Here he is. You had two bags. So here's that Charizard again. You probably want to take another look at him. And so here's what we see on this Charizard. A little white speck. It's pretty small. But also I would say this corner up here is a little smaller as well. I think we did a pre-grade on this already. Yeah. So here are the good cards in this bag. Okay. You got Turnitus, VMAX is pretty notable, Scissor V. Uh, here are some nines. Okay, you got the Mimikyu in the nine pile. And uh, the don't grades back here. Sorry about that. So you've already pre-graded this one. You are correct. There we go. All right, we'll put that back here. Sweet. Now, once again, this is for Mr. Emiliano. Thank you, Emiliano. This is a fun opening. He's doing like a sampler pack. Sleep. A uh, spine improvement. You got Japanese Jungle Executor. That's a vintage card. It's a vintage common card. 
Your booster pack of the large custom was a cold booster pack. So you just get a small pull rather than a big one. And it's a, uh, again, it's Executor Jungle Japanese. Give the Persian EX to Quip. You told us she likes those. Sounds good, mister. Speaking of which, she's over here. All right, here, let me put the camera on you. No, you're hiding. <laughs> she's not ready. You gonna eat the soup? You have some soup hungers? She's going to bedroom to eat some soup. All right, what do we got here? I grab the camera and throw it on her. <laughs> here are the microwave. She was, she was heating up some soup. She made some chicken noodle soup for me tonight. We got Bolton. Sigilif GX. All right, so so far, Slowbro and Sigilif. Can you give me her reaction? What? We got Frostlass. Here's the Unbroken Bonds. What do we got in Unbroken? Oh, picking up Persian Full Art. Very nice. Oh, uh, reaction to the Persian card. Uh, well, this would require me to record her, and she would probably say no. <laughs> She got to do a big lean. Oh, what's this? <gasps> no way, dude. You just pulled, I think this is like the second most valuable card in the Cosmic Collection. Arceus, Dialga, Palkia. What a night, man. We've had some fantastic pulls tonight. Crazy. We pulled that. We pulled the Champion's Path Charizard tonight. We pulled two Pikachus tonight. Was it two Pikachus or one Pikachu? We actually had a lot of great pulls. Holy... That was for Mr. Emiliano. Wow, very lucky. Emiliano's going to be like, send that off to CGC. So you didn't do too bad. You pick up Arceus, Persian, Sigilyph, and Gal uh, Galarian Slowbro. Can't speak. Especially as we get later into the live stream, right? <laughs> Start tripping on my words more. John Loman, he says, wigged, if nothing, fun donation to the pity poll. Oh, thanks, man. It is a Pinsir GX. And that's for who? John Loman? You sure you don't want it, John? I think we should give that to you because you actually have to pull that out of a pack. Oh, right. He's not going to be up here anymore. We got all these now. Jared, James, Jonathan, Mr. Loman. Oh, maybe he doesn't have a bag. Maybe that's why he says donate it. We can get you a new bag. Jonathan, Javier. We got Jonathan Wood. Why are so many people have J in the name? I'm furious, mister. You two gave me a damn Yugi's ad when I came back to you. No! They're trying to infect your mind with the Yugi's. He says, is it Christmas yet? It's always Christmas over here. All right, John, you got the crinkled up bag. He might have already had a bag. You're trying to find the clip of your bags. So next up, we have Valentin Salazar. He says, two customs, Godspeed this time. Charizard or bust. All right, pack number one. Pack number one is going to be a hollow pack. And pack number two is Raichu GX. Okay. Mr. Valentin. Valentin, do you have a bag? I don't know if he has a bag. Yes, he does. No cards for Sweetie there? Alex said, Alex P.S. said I could. Oh, I didn't even get to read the rest of that. GMAC, what's up, GMAC? GMAC says one XY breakpoint. All right. One XY breakpoint. And a formal grade of my hits and 20 for the bestest card. Can I keep the wrapper for this one too? Thanks, mister. You're the bestest. All right. Here we go. We've got Bursting Balloon. Oh, man. That's not a Cherry Zard. I really like the Breakpoint set. Breakpoint's awesome. Your cards are in pity pulls. What? Oops. Now. Oh, man, that's kind of falling over. One break point, a formal grade of my hits. Let's go find your bag. Let's see. 
We've got Entei. Your Entei has a shot at a 10. Wigglytuff is going to be like maybe a 5. Same, uh, this guy might be worse actually. This guy is more like a 3. So these are tough grades on those. This guy might be a 5. Flying Pikachu has a little white dot there. Unfortunately, Flying Pikachu is going to be a 9. This is 2 off center. That'll be an 8. That's got a print line. Polyrath, uh, you know what? He's got white on the edges. Raichu promo. He's slightly off center. He'd probably be a 9. Maybe if you're lucky, he's a 10. Inteleon. Then on this corner compared to this one. But actually, I think he'll still have a chance for a 10. Just a small one. Melodic. Same here with the Melodic. Twin Energy. He's then on the bottom. Sandaconda. Santa kind of no, he's thin on the bottom of the front. Yeah, he's the same way. He's these cards are close. They're very close, definitely. This one's too off center for me. Some hollow cards that are already sleeved. Alakazam EX from Fates Collide. Is that a white corner? What's going on with the corner there? Okay, it's just perforation. He's pretty close. He might have a small shot at a ten. We're gonna put him in the nine. Nah, that one's off. This one might have a shot at a 10, though. Team Skull Grunt from a little while back. Then on this corner down here. Uh, probably a 9. Let's see. Incineroar. Incineroar might be a 10. Lunala. Lunala's slightly thinner on the bottom. Yeah, I would, I'd probably put him in the 9. With the, you know, it's, it's one of those 9s that maybe they'll be nice and it'll be a 10. Wishy-washy, let's see. Slightly thinner on the bottom than the top. Toxtricity, slightly off center. Drowsy. Hmm. Has a vertical print line. Pidgey has Spirit Link. I'm not going to grade that. <laughs> then on the bottom, nobody ever asks for a card like that to be sent off. You know what I mean? It's like, what am I doing? <laughs> Then on this corner here, probably a nine. Hound Doom. Then on this corner up here, uh, Flying Pikachu. Flying Pikachu might have a shot. That's a big card. This is thin on the left. And you might still grade it. Magneton. Magneton's got some weird thing. Wait, is that? Oh, that's just the reflection. Weird. Magneton may have a small shot at a 10. Very small one. Hmm. All right, let's go ahead and split these up into parts. Here we are. Your best nines. Probably the Team School Grunt, the Alakazam, Flying Pikachu, and uh, these vintage cards, which you can always grade vintage in my opinion. All right, because even if it grades one, people will, somebody will still want it. Now we got Flying Pikachu over here. Entei is your best card by far, followed by Flying Pikachu, and the rest are pretty close to each other, but these two in the front are really good. All right, there you go. Now, what else did you say? 20 for the bestest card. Can I keep the wrapper? So you said 1xy breakpoint and a formal grade of my hits, and 20 for the bestest card. Um, help me understand your order, GMAC. I don't think you ordered a grading. Okay. So, GMAC, it sounds like you want to send one of your cards off to grade, but you only sent $28. So I know that the pre-grade was... I don't remember what a pre-grade cost now, but I know if you wanted to grade one card, it'd be 20 bucks. Actually, I don't know how much the ente goes. Take, take a look at the transaction again. You might not have sent enough, okay? Later has the rest. Oh, okay. It all makes sense now. <laughs> the math wasn't adding up. Perfect. All right. And we just grab one of these. <laughs> it's got like dust on it. Mr. Is there still a giveaway? Well, um, I don't know. What do you guys think? We'll do GMAC right here. 
All right. Hey, mister, send me kitty. All right, I'm sending you one fresh kitty right now. Next up, we have Christian Fragoso. What's up, Christian? Christian says, hey, I'll take one custom booster. My name is BTG on YouTube. I am new, so I don't have a bag. Nice to meet you, Christian. Let's see. And you pull a Gyarados. Everyone's pulling Gyarados. Sweet. And I'm out of... Uh, give me a second. I got to get some sandwich baggies. You know what? I think I have some sandwich baggies up here. Give me a moment. You know what I did today, guys? For the first time, I used Instacart to go shopping for, like, food. So I just sat on my couch and I went shopping for my phone for food. And then someone delivered the food. I was, honestly, I was shocked. It was so good. I did not realize that I needed Instacart in my life. And now I do realize it. <laughs> it's very nice. All right, let's see. Instacart is so nice. I hate shopping in like Walmart. It's so gross. And crowded. I hate crowds. Honestly, I feel like my soul is leaving my body anytime I'm inside of a Walmart. There we go. Prime delivery from Whole Food Nerd. I'd never used that service before. Instacart, it was so good. Simba, Simba Vong, he says, 10 custom and I'm new. Live shipping to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hmm. 10 custom on your first order, huh? I'm, I'm thinking about rejecting that order. Uh, I know that sometimes people jump in and they want to buy a lot and then they regret it later. <sighs> Let me think about it. That's an awfully large order. Mr. Simba, are you here in the comment section? He says, go deep. He, he bought 10 packs. This is his first order with me. He says, yeah, okay. You're still wanting it, Simba? He says, yes. Simba, that's a really large order, and what if you don't like your pulls? He says, get it, my guy. He says, go for it. All right, we're going to go for it then. Here it goes. Mr. Simba, pack number one, shiny gibble. Number two, oh, what do we get here? 18 crimson. Number three, excadrill. Number four. One bulk ETB. Number five is Charizard GX. Number six is Holographic Heracross. Number seven is Raichu. Number eight, Raichu GX Full Art. And number nine is one Shining Legends. All right. Place this back up here. Oops. He says, you did good. Hey, Mr. TCC, I took a nap early just to see you today. How's it going? What's up, man? What is going on, Russ? Didn't he have 10? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, one more. 10. Look at Tongue. Mmm, the ladies love him. Don't lie. Lie about it, ladies. I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> It's almost childish. Card economists say, like the stream, please, duh. Like the stream, please, duh. So let's see what we got here. You need your Shining Legends, your ETB Bulk Box, and your 18 Crimson. Let's go get you signed up on those. So the Bulk ETB is kind of cool. I'll write your name down here. Simba, be sure to uh, confirm your address with me on the uh, Discord, okay? Your shipping address, because I'll probably ship this out fast. One Shining Legend. Okay, let's go grab a Shining Legend. Here it is. 
Did you like the image of Shuckle that I sent you? I love the image of Shuckle. And you pull. All right, so this pack is cold, unfortunately. Let's try the 18 Crimsons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We got twelve. Spook my kitty. He says, let's go. <laughs> twelve. Mr. Do a box break, please. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There we go, 18. Is it worth grading non-first edition? Mr. Goes through cards super fast. That's correct. On this channel, the way we open packs, no nonsense. We go very fast, and I don't pretend that your pulls are good. No pretending. Sometimes the pulls are actually good. Sometimes we have a pull of a card that can get you like $500, $700. I mean, think about that Mewtwo we just pulled. That actually was pretty crazy. Break an evil box. Oh my God, we did it. I can't believe we did it. What's up, Kitty? Kitty just joined us. There's Kitty. She's being very cute. Want a one bulk ETB, says Simba. Oh, he says, what's a bulk ETB? So a bulk ETB is just bulk off of the table. It could probably be unsorted, could include hollows and codes, and it's being shipped to your house right now, and have fun with it. <laughs> you can sell off the codes, I guess, if you wanted. You can sell off the whole box, honestly. Here goes. This Jingmo. He won 18 packs. That's right, Bunnel B. Have you cut cards before from snipping? Never. Never in my life, mister. Counter catcher. I cut the cards every time. I do it on purpose. Kakuna. Oh, what did I see in there? That Gengar might be gradable, actually. Well, he's thin on the left. He's thin on the right side of the card, I mean. Did Kitty vomit today? You know what? I don't think Kitty did vomit today. Kitty, you're a good kitty. You get a treat today. Cartana GX. Kitty's been very good. We got Jingmo O. Como O. Agron. Shallows. Luzamine. Kitty no vomit equals day ruin. He had a hollow Xerneas. Salazzle. Pikachu. What do we got? Buzzwool GX. Cartana and Buzzwool, huh? It doesn't get much hotter than that. Poor Zard. Jigglypoof. What happened to the three-hour stream? I know. I got to clear out the list. That's what I got to do. We're almost done, actually. Pumpkaboo. All right. Mister. So, no crazy hyper rares coming out of there. You pulled a number of hollows, so you were getting white backs. You got two GXs, Buzzwool and Cartana. You must have grabbed the cold half of the box then, huh? And then we do have this lovely hollow hair across. Let's put him in the front. He says, rip. Yeah, no, no shiny Gyarados, no hyper rare Gyarados coming out of that. How many orders do you have left? I have a number of orders left. Simba. Nice to meet you, mister. He says, rip. Next up, we have GMAC again, who fixed her order. Then Philip. He says, live shipping, please, and add in some shiny star V bolt. You got it. All right. So we're doing live shipping for Mr. Philip. And PayPal's going to have me log in. Mr. Philip. Oh, I got a headache, man. Kitty, I'm getting a headache. What do you think of that? Have we shipped you before, Philip? I don't know if I've shipped it before. Kitty, I'm ready for some better background music. When you play Pokemon, long plays in the background, it's mostly just battle music, I notice. All right, I'll, I'll make your postage a little higher on this so we can add some extra weight to your bag. Oh, and it doesn't like your address. Uh-oh, hold on. 
So it's not liking the address you have in PayPal. Give me a moment. Let's see, maybe you mentioned it in here. So, Mr. Philip Truong, I don't know if you're still watching. I need you to contact me on Discord and finish your address. There's a there's an issue going on. Let's see. Yeah, I can't search you on Discord. There's an issue going on where I need the rest of your zip code. Oh, Phil says I'm here. Awesome. So, the way it works with an address, sometimes you need to have the last couple digits of your zip code. There's a way to look that up. I'm sure it's very simple. If you could go find that and then send me a message on like Discord with those last digits, that would really help, okay? What's going on right now is the shipping software is rejecting your address because it wants it to be more specific because I guess there's multiple instances of that address that exist. I don't know. But yeah, you want the last four digits of your zip code and, and send those to me in a message and I'll get that label made. I hate it when that happens. It's really annoying. Also, the other thing is, uh, Mr. Philip Truong, make sure that if you have like an apartment number or something like that, like if you're in apartment one or something like that, be sure to include that too, okay? Because that's the other address. It's telling me that it might be an address that has like an apartment number. Okay, so I talked about it. Your address bad, no ship. That's right. Next up we have Alex here. And Alex says, hi, mister. I forgot to send a message with my last order for my Charizard to be express CGC graded and one shiny one shiny star V for this order. All right, sounds good. So he would like to try express grading with CGC, which I didn't even offer in the description, but you know what? I'm gonna go for it, let's do it. Let's do it, mister. What do we got here? Pikachu code card, that's cool. And Lapras. Okay, oops, we'll set that there. We'll put this over here. And this was for Alex Taylor, who would like to express grade his Charizard with CGC. Let's do it. You'll be like the only guy I'm sending out to them. Maybe I'll grab some of my own cards. I don't think I have any cards that expensive that they need to be expressed. All right, give me a moment here. <laughs> Gotta pick the fuzz off this. These card savers, like, attract fuzz to them, I swear. All right, there we go. That's for Alex. Trailer. CGC, and we're going to say EXP. So we're expressing that to CGC. Actually, I have two other cards that need to be sent out express, and I think I'll send them out tomorrow as well. We got these two. Are those the only two? So those got to go out for PSA. Yeah. We got one from Bryant Lewis. He opened Blue Eyes White Dragon, and one for CS Men. He opened up the Shining Charizard. So we're going to express those, and this will go in a separate order to CGC. So these are going to sit out for now. And then we have Mr. M Business. Two Darkness Ablaze, and I send off my best card to CGC. All right, the best one gets sent to CGC. Sounds like a plan. Let's see what you pull out of here. Oh, I'm getting a bad headache, guys. Kitty, that's no good. Phil types his address in general. Uh, let me delete that. That's not the way. <laughs> okay, it looks like somebody might have already deleted it. Unless it's in Pokistan. Yeah, it looks like somebody might have already deleted it. Let me try go... I'll, I'll see if I can look that up real fast. <laughs> He's like, I'm just ready to... Actually, it doesn't look like anyone deleted it. You're saying he typed it up in general? I don't see it in general. Maybe he deleted it. 
So, so let me show you how he said I was joking. Oh, oh, my bad. Uh, if somebody exposed their identity in the Discord, I was going to go fix that immediately. So, look at all these messages. I got to deal with those. So, this is me right here. And if you take a close look, you'll notice my name's got a little crown next to it. And that's how you know that you're sending me a message. Because I'm the only one that can have that crown. Okay. Alex losing his mod ship. That's right. What's up with that, Alex? No longer a mod. Demodded. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. You got me confused, though. Ducklet, I thought he did a big stinky poopy, and I needed to go get rid of that. Nobody wants their address on the internet. So, Mr. M Business wants his best card sent off to grade. M Business. Nerdy noob, here we are. His best card, mind you. Let's see. Triple Cherry Zards. Oh, it's going to be the Celebi. There it is. The beautiful Celebi. Okay, where's my PSA card? PSA holder. Card saver. Philip sent his address. All right. I'll go look at my messages real fast. I got hiccups, man. Okay, we're going to say C1M business it's under the name blix in discord okay blix i see it it's under the name blix so you're offering me a mailbox number that seems like it would be important so that's different from what i had previously from you Give me a second on that. We don't want any of these to be misdelivered ever. So mailbox number, huh? I'm gonna have that in the address this time. That seems like a vital piece of information. Let's see what happens now. So it's still not liking it. Oh, wait, he, here it goes. It gives me one option. Let's see. Okay, there it goes. We got it. It, it did adjust it one last time. There we go. Sweet! Now, you want some bulk from the Japanese set, huh? Can I get that for you? Let's see if I can get it without making everything fall down. Oh, my God. I can't believe I just did that. I just pulled this off of the bottom of the bulk pile, and it did not fall over. Isn't that amazing? Like, it was, it almost did, but I was able to keep the balance of the tower. <laughs> all right. I can't ship you all of this. That would be too heavy, but I can ship you about this much of it. Put the rest on top. And, Philip, let's go find your bag. Did I already put you up top? I did. Okay, so your bag was actually already pretty heavy. Not allowed to go over a pound here. Oops. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. In a worst case scenario, they'll return it and say it's too heavy. Which we don't want that to happen. That would be very annoying. Yeah, it's pretty close. I did, I'm definitely not paying enough postage for this one, but I want you to have some extra cards, so we'll see if we can get it through. The thing is, with the USPS, they don't always punish you for underpaying for postage because it's kind of a waste of their time to do that. They don't have time for that. All right. Alright, 
Man, I need like a list of things to do. There's too much to do. I'm just, I'm gonna forget what to do next. God damn, dude. Philip is shipped. Man, that bag's probably a pound. What do you think of that, kitty? And I'm just gonna hit refresh one more time. Like three more guys put in orders. Aaron Fowler says one wigged. You got it, Mr. Aaron Fowler. Let's do it. Aaron Fowler, one wigged. Aaron, you pulled the vintage cards. Sweet. I'm going to process these, actually. You ready? So Aaron Fowler, Damon Sims. One pack of Steam Siege for Sweaty Snowman in chat. Wow, really? All right, here it goes. Sweaty Snowman. Sweaty Snowman pulling Mega Steelix EX. It could be 10K, 20K, 30, 30K. I can't believe he just pulled that. Wow. Oh, it's a little off center, though. So that's for Mr. Sweaty Snowman. Here we are. 40K? It'll be 40K in July. Sweaty Snowman. He's ready to be shipped. I just need his address. And then we have Ryan Pieta. Ryan says, too custom. Need a new bag. Also, question for you. Are Japanese Neo 4 boosters weighable? We think that they're not weighable. We're not 100% sure. If I had a whole booster box of them, I would know. We've got Onyx, and we've got Raichu. Sweet. Okay, those were the last two packs of the night. Not a single pack more. Man, I sure wonder what's in those last packs. Hmm. I sure wonder. So that's for Ryan. Let me go find your bag, Ryan. Sorry about the tough pulls, man. Ryan, am I going to find you up top? I sure wonder what was in those last few packs. Probably nothing. Probably just gear doses. Be crazy if it was like some expensive PSA card. Where's your bag, Ryan? Ryan Payne, Ricardo, Ryan Hutch, Robert, Russ, RNEF, Robert, President Agnew. So it's not there. I gotta be careful with this. I don't want to mishandle that card. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to mishandle anyone's card, obviously. Ryan Pieta. That's killing me. We're on the last order, and I can't find the bag. Ryan, I'm just going to get you a new bag. You realize that, right? Oh, yeah, like a big fat bag on the side. Did you have a big fat bag on the side? Do I have plans to open my base set box? Yeah, I'll eventually open that. We'll get it open right now, guys. Who wants to open that base set box? Ryan. Pieta. Me, 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 me. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay. And this is Aaron Fowler. Aaron Fowler, does he have a bag? I couldn't find his bag earlier. I bet he does. We're jumping into the Discord server for the giveaway. Hyperban. Let's see. Giveaway time. We're going to clone the channel. And then we're going to delete the older one. Delete. And now we're going to go ahead and unlock it so everyone can make their number guess. Sweet. All right. Look at those numbers pour in. That's too many numbers. While you guys are doing that, I'm just going to browse the internet. Let's see what's going on in the news. CNN. 
Biden's term nears as Trump dissolves in disgrace and disarray. Oh, damn. Trump to issue around 100 pardons. Wow. Very interesting. Let's see. Biden's first test. Biden officially warns Honduran migrants now is not the time to come to the United States. Huh. Interesting. All right, let me get the number generator open. He said, try next week. Oh, by the way, the guess will once again be between the numbers 100, or 1 and 150, okay? So 1 and 150. And now I'm going to go ahead and lock up the channel. You got to the count of 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and it's locked. Okay, the channel's locked. Let's see what the winning number is. 132 is the winning number. Hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and make it harder for this person to do this again. So hold on, I, I had to remove somebody from the, the game. And now, what was the number? The number was 132? Yeah, 132. 132. 132 is not a win, 130 is not a win, or 131. Oh, 129. 28? 27? 26? 25? 24? Mr. Juan Yugans is the winner. Is that Hugh Gonzalez? All right, there you go, mister. Let me just make sure he didn't guess more than one time. Nope, he did not. And uh, let me see if he has a bag on the table real fast. He does have a bag on the table. How nice is that? Hugh Gonzalez for the win. All right, here goes. Last pack of the night. <gasps> it's just a Gyarados. Oh my Lord, there's too many Gyaradoses. Banned Gyarados. All right, Mr. Hugh Gonzalez, you are one Gyarados wealthier. James, Jesse, John, Hosway, Jordan. So nothing crazy out of the PSA, uh, the, um, I'm not, sorry, not the PSA, the custom packs tonight. Must be uh, in the packs tomorrow night. Mr. Why did evolutions rise so much? Why did evolutions rise so much? Because everyone wants them, that's why. I appreciate all of you guys watching, and I'll see you guys in the next...